do share one common bond, January 2nd, 1984. For New Heifel, it was his greatest day as a college player. Four touchdown passes that stunned the University of Illinois. They won it 45-9, and Aaron Neuheisel Rose Bowl MVP honors. And just a few hours later, Schnellenberger's greatest moment as a college coach, a 31-30 victory over Nebraska in the Orange Bowl, and a national championship for Miami. Fate has brought them together again tonight. Gentlemen? Okay, Mike, thanks very much. That is strange that uh, both would win those honors and it would happen on the same day and so many years apart and then wind up here in this football game tonight. And this is an early game for these two teams as far as normally what they have played in the past. Rick Neuheisel, the second youngest coach right now in Division I. Ron Cooper of Louisville uh, is the only one younger than him, and I think we're only talking about a few days. But it's, it's been a, a transition that, that has been very smooth. He was the offensive coordinator. He was the quarterback coach. Howard Schnellenberger. First conference game, Mike, in 171 games. For people at home saying, wait a minute, why? Because Miami was independent, because Louisville was independent. In fact, the last conference game that he played in, I think, was when he was head coach of the Baltimore Colts. And he got fired. <laughs> well, uh, it is a situation that the man... Uh, he traveled all over this state in a nine-day period. They went to over 30 cities. He talked to the people. He pressed the flesh just like a politician. And he said, I'm here to sell you something, and it's not a bill of goods. Get on board this wagon, and we're going to try to take it in the right direction. Tonight, I think that's what's so big for them in this ball game, Mike, is because he wants them to, they, they bought it, it's going well, but they got to continue. And you're right, Ron, and he made a statement this week, he said, we're going to kick Colorado's rear end, and I think he did that to big, build up his players and give them some confidence, but he's out there, and every one of the Colorado players has that pack for their locker room. To the near side is Troutman, that's Lyndon Henry to the far side. Herschel Troutman, an average of 15.7. You can see his longest, just under 40. And Jeremy Alexander kicks it off, and this meeting between Colorado and Oklahoma is underway. Out of the end zone, so it gives us an opportunity to check the Russell Athletic starting lineups. For Colorado, John Hessler, think about it. Last week, he had about 15 seconds to think about playing. Now he's had an entire week. The wide receivers, Ray Carruth. He may be one of the speediest receivers in America. Some people say he runs under 4-2. And the offensive line, this is really an outstanding group. But the man there in the middle, Brian Stoltenberg out of Sugarland, Texas, he is an extremely fine one. And that's where it all starts, right there. He not only calls the defensive calls, great experience and a very, very fine offensive center. Troutman on the first play, and a flag comes down as he stopped at the line of scrimmage. John Roy, the referee in tonight's ball game, says it's motion against Oklahoma. The starters defensively for the OU Sooners, running from the 4-3. Cedric Jones doesn't say a lot, but a lot of people say he is a quiet assassin very fast group of linebackers you will see broderick simpson 51 all over the field tonight he can run with a lot of the running backs and in the secondary some good ones back here Malin wesley has won the job at free safety and has become one of the real leaders on this defensive team first pass got it complete near sideline to james kidd and he will be pushed out of bounds at the 32 yard line and just like that oklahoma has given up their first first down to Colorado. But Oklahoma has to stop in this Colorado offense tonight. If you see in the last week's ball game against AM, they had over 20 plays of 10 yards or more versus AM last week. Said 15 there, but there was really 20 plays. And they had one drive of 13 plays against Texas AM. So they're a big play offense that Oklahoma has to shut down. You see the Buffaloes in that two tight end alignment, only one setback, and it goes to Troutman. Troutman not very big at 5'7", 180, but you could see heads go back as he popped it hard into the line of scrimmage. John Hessler, the quarterback tonight, the coaches from Colorado told me yesterday that he had an excellent week of practice. Mike 
some people said, well, last week he didn't have much time to think about it. Now he's had an entire week. You kind of take an opposite opinion of that, don't you? Yeah, he got more snaps in practice this week, so he really is intense. He's got to be a little bit better this week. Hopkins back into the boundary, and he takes a pretty good shot as he's knocked out of bounds just across the 35. It's Brent DeClasey, who is over there, the first Sooner to get to him. I, I told you, these linebackers, you'll see DeClasey, Simpson, and Tyrell Peters, and they are all over the field. Ron, going back to what you said about John Hessler, he's been in the program for three years. That's two spring practices, so he's had a lot of practice time in this offense. Of course, you're in a different role, and you're the guy that you're counting on, but uh, that's what you expect of your backup quarterback. Step up. Well, let's see if he can come through and convert on this one. It's the third down. Has great steps. He's going to be sacked first time tonight. Cedric Jones, the senior out of Houston, Lamar. He's there to wrap him up. Big number 57, the quiet assassin. And that's what you want in your ball club when you're at home and you want the crowd in the ball game. You want a big sack right off the bat. Cedric Jones gives you that against Clint Moore, the left tackle. Oklahoma should end up with good field position, Ron. Kicking into the wind. P.J. Mills back in the deep safety. Look at the wind. Hold this punt up. It is going to hit at the 39 and now takes a Colorado bounce. And P.J. Mills hollers, get away from it. 33 yards on the kick. This is the way the Sooners will start with the youngster, Eric Moore, at quarterback. And he's got to get off to a fast start, faster than he has the last couple of weeks. The wide receivers, Oklahoma loves their tight ends, particularly Stephen Alexander, really fine athlete and good hands. And up front, this is a veteran offensive line, stamped probably the most consistent. But, Mike, this is the first time in a year because of injuries that this entire group has been together. Running play on first down and more. Cracked hard by six, now seven, white shirt Colorado Buffalo. This is the way they start. Kerry Hicks, number 94. Mike, every time we do them, it seems as though he comes up with a big ball game out of Salt Lake City. The linebackers, Matt Russell, he plays in the middle. His teammates say he's just simply a madman. He's a perfect middle linebacker. This is a good group in the secondary. A couple of inexperienced players, but Donnell Liamiti, he's Mr. Big Play for Colorado. Pass to Mills. Now this is what he does best. He can catch the short ball and turn it into something big. Ron, I think the big factor in this ball game tonight is whether or not Oklahoma can score against Colorado, and the big onus goes on the offensive line. Eric Moore, the left-hander, quarterback to Howard Schnellenberger and Gary Nord, the offensive coordinator, really like him. He's 23 out of 53, two interceptions, one touchdown. Oklahoma with the player shaken up and down at the 46-yard line, and you can see Moore is up checking on James Allen, the junior out of Wynwood, Oklahoma. He is the tailback. He and Moore have been, uh, they used to share time. Now they're in the same backfield. But you can see the trainers are looking at his right ankle. Well, we hope that he only stunned it. You see the grimace. Sometimes you do just stun it. It seems bad at first. And then after you walk around a little bit, it's, uh, it's better. Jeff Frazier will come in. And he is an extremely good replacement number 19 a junior out of oklahoma city frazier is 6'1 213 pounds and you see his numbers and the average at 7.2 all coaches would love to have a replacement who had a 70 yard per carry average they really have three good running backs running play wow more hit at the line of scrimmage and that is matt russell the middle linebacker who we just talked about they call him a madman and he boy he's perfect for that middle linebacking position he loves to put a headgear in there ron i'm going to repeat that i think the offensive line to oklahoma the game's in their hands tonight whether or not they can handle this colorado front and run the football that's going to be the key because they want to take pressure off of eric moore the young quarterback he lost a yard, so it's second down and 11. Colorado shows blitz, and here they come. 
Under pressure, gets it away. Has his tight end, Alexander. They have singled up on the coverage because of the blitz, and it is a first down, Oklahoma. Mike Phillips was applying the pressure. Yeah, they brought Mike Phillips, number 91, just trying to pressure Eric Moore, but he just stands right in there, finds his tight end, Stephen Alexander, for a good game. When, wow. the new, when the new coaching staff came in, Eric Moore thought they were going to switch him to receiver. He went up to see Gary Norton. He said, I'm not a receiver. I'm going to be a quarterback. And he, he has shown him so far that he is a good quarterback. He really has. James Allen, okay. He is back in the lineup for Oklahoma. Colorado sets the blitz again and runs straight ahead. Russell and Terry Hicks will combine on the stop. Michael, let me ask you something. Last week against Texas A&M, Colorado just blitzed and blitzed and blitzed. Can they afford to do that? I mean, they're, they're starting off that way tonight, but more, it, you have to defend him because he can run the football. You're right. He's the hidden factor because if you blitz Eric Moore and he gets out of that pocket, you're running man coverage. With your secondary, Eric Moore is capable of big plays and scrambling in his offense. What do you do, rolling more? Rolling, get him on the outside more. Has time, gets his tight end again. Steven Alexander will take it to the 31. And Mike Tirico, let's check in with you the first time tonight. Well, Ron, Southern Cal is uh, looking to move to 2-0 in the Pac-10. Looks like they'll be able to do it. Brad Otten now in at quarterback. Good touchdown to the tight end, John Allred. An 18-yarder, USC leading Arizona State 16 to nothing. Well, Mike, they may be fortunate that uh, this was their draw this week with the suspensions and all the distractions. And you know, Mike, that happened so late. Even if it happened in the early in the week, it would have been tough, but it's tough to make adjustments when it happens late in the week. Sometimes your players rise to a different level when something like that happens. Middle linebackers blitz again, but it's an awfully good block in front, and Allen will have the first down as Roska comes up to make the tackle, and that was Gerald Moore, number seven, who pancaked the defensive play. Watching tape today on Oklahoma, Gerald Moore is the complete back. He'll block as a fullback. He's a good, solid runner. has great hands out of the backfield. Before this game's over, you're going to see number seven, Gerald Moore, with some big catches. But he's got the whole package, Ron. It was Greg Jones that he was blocking on. So the Sooners move the chain. We have no score. About to go under nine minutes this opening quarter. And the running play and look at the quickness of the pursuit of Colorado. Moore tries to turn the corner, but he can't get it done. And it's Murkerson who comes over to make the hit. You talk about Colorado. They made a complete switch on defense now. They're more of a blitzing team. They were a 50 defense last year, five down linemen. Now they're a 4-3 team, and they've really kind of gone to the Nebraska philosophy. Hey, we're going to heat you up, sick them, penetrate, all that. So it's a different style of defense under Rick Neuheisel. Mike, more and more teams are getting away from the, from the Reed defenses they right They want there. that speed on the field. That's more in motion. Gives it to Allen. Breaks the tackle. Has five. Has ten. Cut it off to the 11-yard line, and Ryan Olson finally will put a stop on him, and the 75,000 partisans really like it. What Oklahoma did with a great call here is motioned out more here, so that leaves just one linebacker in the box. Really, the safety's going to have to end up making this play. On James Allen, there's just nobody in the middle of the field. A good call by Gary Norton. Tenth play of the drive coming up. And go back with Gerald Moore. He will have five yards as he takes it at right guard. And Daryl Price wraps him up. The other big question for Colorado is tonight that came off a very emotional AM game. You know, when you have back-to-back -back games like this, Oklahoma's been pumped for this game. They've ha they have San Diego State, SMU, and North Texas. They really haven't played the opponents that Colorado has played. So it's a second down if you've just joined us. Colorado picked up one first down, but had to kick it away. And now the Sooners on an extended drive with a second down inside the 10. James Allen maybe has one, and Kerry Hicks is holding on to him. Now, third down. They can pick up the first down at the one. Mike, do you continue to hammer away at this tough run defense, or do you put it up this time? This is where I would expect Eric Moore on some type of rollout, maybe an option play or some type of rollout on the corner off of play action, where he has the run pass capabilities. And they like their tight end, so the tight end is a big play. 
type receiver, Stephen and Alexander, in that's, this situation. I think that's who I'd look for, number 80. Oh. Headed to the corner. And even as fast as Moore is, look how many white shirts were out there to run him out of bounds. Well, that's the rollout. That's the run pass theory that you've got. Matt Russell, number 16, was able to knock him outside. No fake at all on this play, so you've got the run pass possibility. And you see P.J. Mills is wide open in the back of the end zone. They just didn't see P.J. Mills. They missed that one, Ron. He's wide open. That's a touchdown for Oklahoma that they did not get because Eric Moore did not see the field. Jeremy Alexander, they're going to try to get the sure thing and pick up the three points as the ball will go down at the 11. Chip shot, knocked it home. Sooners are on the board first. So let's take a break. Six minutes, 53 seconds left to play. Opening quarter, Sooners three, Buffalo's nothing. Well, this is it. Ooh, what a dump. Don't worry. We know a good handyman. What a dump. Can you help? Sure. A primer, a couple of wing nuts. How's that? That'll work. Hey, can you miter cut those floorboards? Will do. Good news. The external beer tap is functional. Yes! When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller life, life is good. I could have done this. Yeah. In these mountains, you need a tough truck. Dave Ashley, search and rescue volunteer. Trails, I tend to make my own. It's one torture test after another. But the people I'm looking for depend on someone to find them. Well, I depend on something too. My Ford F-Series. How do you learn a job like this? Let's just say I drive something tougher than a golf cart on the weekends. Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. All right, gentlemen, tomorrow, you bust the mind. Nice up. Man, I'm hungry. Russell Athletic Wear is made to handle the toughest situations on and off the field. Hot dog. French fries. Hamburger. Tacos. Tacos grande. Pizza. Coach? Going somewhere, ladies. Our work. For the case of commitment. Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Get up there, large one. Go, go. ESPN's presentation of CFA Primetime is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Chosen for leadership ability, vocal commands, and marching routine, the role of drum major is quite an honor. Whereas uh, many large schools have two and three drum majors, OU's 290-member band votes just one. Jeremy Alexander set to kick it off for Oklahoma. Troutman and Lyndon Henry again. The twin safety back for Colorado. Well, Mike, and he's got a little wind behind him, but out of the end zone. Here's what Eric Moore didn't see. P.J. Mills is going to go down and work in the corner and wide open on this third down situation. Eric Moore is going to roll to the left. Now P.J. Mills just clears, and you see him in the back of the end zone, just wide open back there for six. Eric was kind of running for his life at the time, though. But he'll look back at that and say, oh, my. Got to have those. John Hessler back on the field for his second offensive possession. Hands it out in the flat. That's Kidd, and he'll pick up seven. And Mike Tirico, let's go back to you. Ron, in Tucson, Arizona's playing a sloppy game. 11 penalties, three blocked extra points by Cal, keeping the Bears in it. And Pat Barnes, 31 yards to Bobby Shaw. This is a game in the fourth. The lead is just five for Arizona. <laughs> well, three blocked extra points. I don't think I've ever heard of that in one ball game. Have you, Mike? Special teams coach there is in trouble. <laughs> Or a special teams player, I might add. Troutman. Bounces off one, bounces off two, gets by. Nope, he won't get by to Quasi. Holding on to his jersey, but he's going to have the first down with the second effort. 
That's what they say about Herschel Troutman. Oh, he just makes you miss, and he has good balance, and he's just a bouncing running back out of Naples, Florida. He should have really been stopped here without much of a game. Gets hit right here, spins, keeps moving, keeps his eyes straight ahead. Brent crazy finally brings him down. Simpson held on to him there, number 51, along with Quasi to make the stop. Troutman again, and he'll take it for a couple of yards, and you can see 57, Cedric Jones holding on to him. Well, for any of you keeping track of the baseball playoff picture, ESPN is the place to be for the finish. If the Angels win tonight, 1.30 tomorrow at ESPN2, you'll see the Yankees at the Blue Jays. If the Angels lose tonight at 2 o'clock at ESPN2, you'll see Houston at Chicago. Then at 4 o'clock at ESPN, we've got the National League race. San Francisco with Colorado joined in progress and continuing coverage of Houston and Chicago. and I believe he caught it. That's a he good catch. Lips is the tight end with his hands trying to hold it just above the carpet here. And I, yep, the crowd is booing and he got it. Well, that was a good catch by Matt Lips, it's number 88. Good protection, Cedric Jones comes in, beats the block over there on that side, but Lips is with a good catch. Robert, when we watched Oklahoma play last year, we both talked about how fast they are on defense. They're only giving up 50 yards rushing to the opponents they played this year. They roll the pocket this time. Did he catch it in bounds? Yes. That's Chris Anderson right in front of Howard Schnellenberger, and he grabbed it in. Got a foot down, and it will move the chains. First down for Colorado. Coy Detmer. Injured, injured his knee uh, just last week in a Texas A&M game watching on the sideline. Say he may be back in two weeks. Saw him in the locker room now, visiting with John Hessler just prior to the ball game. Calvin breaks it. 10 yards and out close to 15 as Tyrell Peters finally trips him up. But let's go down and check with Mike Adamley. Well, Ron and Mike, assuming that Coy Detmer opts to have surgery after the season is over, he's looking at October 21st in the Iowa State game as a return date, but last Saturday there was no such optimism. This was the play, and watch Coy's right knee. It buckles underneath him as he tries to spin away from the Texas A&M pass rush. He continued to play, and then he did get the pass off, but crumpled to the astroturf and pain. The good news, he's in uniform tonight and was actually practicing with the team earlier and pressing out that break. Pass over the middle, incomplete. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, the good news is that, again, he's in uniform, and he was working out with a right knee brace, and they're very hopeful. They're assuming, I talked to the trainers beforehand, they, they think that he can come back. The official decision will not be made until a week from now, however. Okay, and for his, uh, for the guy who has replaced him, John Hessler, that's the first incomplete pass that he's thrown tonight. He's 4 of 5 for 37 yards. He just joined us, Oklahoma 3. Colorado nothing. Hessler sets, got his man open right over the middle at the 30-yard line. Matt Lipsis and Mike Tirico, let's go back to you. Oran Grambling looking for win 399 for Eddie Robinson, looking very good in the Cotton Bowl. Kendrick Nord, their excellent quarterback. To Solomon Thompson, that made it 28 0. It's now 35 0. Looks like Prairie View will lose a record 51st in a row. Robinson goes for that milestone 400th win tomorrow, or next Saturday, I should say, on ESPN2. Troutman on the right side turns the corner. Tanner and Malin Wesley combining in the stop. What Oklahoma's trying to do because of the great running game that Colorado has is they're trying to move their defensive ends in a little bit inside the tight end, but they're getting sealed a little bit, but that's what Oklahoma wants the ball to bounce to the linebackers. Team gets sealed, but the linebackers are not there to make the play. Second down, the line to make for Colorado just to inside the OU 13. Troutman, top of the ankle, and he will not get away from Rod Manuel. Early in this 
scheme, Ron, I'll tell you something that's very obvious is that Oklahoma's defensive backs are really concerned about the speed of Colorado's receivers. They're way off of them, and that's why they've been open with the short passing and the outs and so forth. They really fear their speed on the outside, and that's what John Hester has to take advantage of, the quick outs to Caruth and Savoy and Davis and Kidd, because they're there. They've got the cushion. Larry Bush. One of the really good cover guys for OU had an interception in last week's game against the University of North Texas. It is third down. Two tall. Caruth is the man that he wanted. Darius Johnson had the cover. And the field goal team will come on, which means Neil Boscarichian. The senior out of Arcadia, California. Oscar Richian, six of seven, his longest is uh, 46 yards. <laughs> this ball is going to be placed down at the 27. 37-yard attempt. They almost got it. He has plenty of distance, and he is no good. Off to the left. So let's take a break. 156 left opening quarter. Three to nothing Sooners. There are a lot of reasons why we created Ford Windstar with over 40 standard safety features including standard dual airbags and standard anti-lock brakes. Many reasons for giving Windstar secure handling and making it longer for a smoother ride. We could acquaint you with some of these reasons, but why wake them up? Ford Windstar, created for the most important people in the world. Well, look who's here. Herschel Walker and Tony Dorsett. Two of the best college football running backs I ever saw. I'll bet you they're swapping some pretty good football stories. Next time, I'm telling you, Tony. Right profile. Really, Herschel? I've always favored my left, man. Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Touchdown! You think next time we should wear the helmet? In my case, the helmet is definitely on it. There's a place in the Big Apple where New Yorkers rush to be on the cutting edge. It's Jean-Louis David. A touch of Paris right in the middle of Manhattan. So if you're looking for a new you, drop in anytime at any of their locations. You don't need an appointment, just your visa card. Because when it comes to your hair on Jean-Louis David, American Express just won't cut it. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Get ready for an SEC West border war. Mississippi State versus Auburn. Thursday at 8, only on ESPN. Now, this was just a couple of moments ago as uh, Heisler talking to his head coach on the sideline. Some instruction as far as that last series is concerned. And what it appeared to me is that John Hester was saying, hey, I was high with the ball. I mean, I had him there, and we're going to be okay. And that's what Rick Neuheisel was telling me. Hey, they've got some cushions on the outside to take advantage of. Terrence Brown in the game at wide receiver. He's at the top of your screen. As the Sooners go from the shotgun. Going to go on top, and that's who he's looking for. Got him open and overthrew Terrence Brown. Wow, had he broken open. Well, Terrence Brown was last year's quarterback. He said, I don't want any part of that quarterback this year. Put me at wide receiver. And Eric Moore went to Gary Norton and said, now I've heard this rumor about me going to wide receiver. I don't want any part of that. I want to be the quarterback. Moore, three of four, 34 yards. His first incomplete pass. So both quarterbacks started off with a, with a very warm hand tonight. See the linebackers in the middle coming on the blitz. Pass incomplete, and Penny really took a shot from Roscoe. 
after the ball went by him. Sometimes you can bait a young quarterback into something, and I think that's what Colorado was able to do, bait him into another long throw. Steve Roscoe, the safety, just sitting back there on the hash. They baited him with the stunt, but no one's coming. See, sometimes those linebackers will get up there like they're going to blitz and bail out of there. I think they talked Eric Moore into a bad play. Well, it's a third down now, and they need to pick up 10 yards. You need to go to the 30. Blitz up the middle, and they try to throw the middle screen, and it is too low. P.J. Mills is the man they were looking for. And they came clean, and that's something now that if you're Colorado's defensive coaches, you know you're able to come through on that blitz that clean. You want to still continue to heat him up. You see how they come through clean? Even though it's a screen, Matt Russell came through two untouched. I'd expect more blitzing out of Colorado as this game goes on. Brian Lewis to kick it away. Picking to Roscoe. Picking with the wind, and he's got a dandy. Roscoe all the way back to the 27. One, two, three flags coming from downfield. That's a 53-yard boot. Nine on the return. Wendell Davis was there to make the tackle on special teams. safety. In fact, Sierra delivers so much, let's see that again. The GMC Sierra 5-speed. The right truck, no matter what your speed. Get it in gear at your Colorado GMC truck dealer now. Shopping for a new car? Look for the big blue roof. That's classic Honda. Exit 262 off I-70 West. Come out and drive the new Hondas at Classic. The popular Accord. The economical Civic. The flashy Prelude. The rugged Passport. The sporty Del Sol. And the all-new Odyssey Van. Classic has a selection of new Hondas. At the price you want. And service when you need it. Plus three acres of quality used cars. Take exit 262 off I-70 West to the big blue roof. That's classic Honda. Seattle needs to rally if they want to clinch the AL West. Still keeps California alive for a tie. The Yankees did win their game over Toronto 6-1. Now, tomorrow on ESPN, if California wins tonight, we'll have coverage of the Yankees and Toronto on ESPN 2. We'll definitely have coverage of Houston and Chicago. If both games are on, we'll switch back and forth. And then on ESPN, after the auto race, we'll have coverage of all the games that mean something in the playoff mix. Ron. Oklahoma 3 to nothing with only 132 left in this opening quarter. And there's only been one quarter this year that the Buffaloes have not scored points in. Let's see if they take advantage of the outside line because they definitely have an advantage with their wide receivers. That's where takes it to Troutman this time and then rolls the pocket and gets it complete. That's Ray Carew. DJ, Darius Johnson was there to make the hit on him after a gain of five. Here's what you're looking at on the outside. Ray Carew with the, the coverage and the cushion on the outside. That's Larry Bush, number 31, just backing out. And then late coming up is Darius Johnson on the hit. That's out there for Colorado on, on opening first. Down. Looks as though that the Sooners, Darius Johnson, may maybe shaken up a little bit. They're getting him off the field and they got a replacement in. And the whistle is blown and uh, stoppage in play, but no timeout was charged. 
the way they're massaging that arm. It looks as though he might have gotten a stinger. That uh, arm has kind of gone dead on him. Wendell Davis, number 28, comes in replacing him. The option of the pitch back to Trotman. Oh, my goodness, Martin Chase, number 93. The sophomore out of Lawton, Oklahoma, was right there to make the hit. I tell you, Ty Peters was there also, Ron, and he was suspended. That's number 45. He was suspended last week. As you see, the rush defense, only 50.7. They're giving up the game average. And when you're suspended, when you don't play the game on Saturday for Howard Snellenberg, you play on the toilet bowl on Monday with all the guys who don't play in the game. They nickname it that bowl, and uh, they made their starter play in that game last week. He played, of course, all the coaches were just crossing their fingers and hoping he got out of that healthy. Well, in that opening quarter, OU held Colorado to 10 rushes and 20 yards, 3 to nothing. We'll be right back to Norman with more. State Farm presents the rules of the game. We're talking about late hits. In this play, a runner is down, followed by a clip. What is the penalty? As soon as the State Farm customer calls with a claim, I'm right on the phone to our claim center. We work as partners. Nancy gives me the information, then I contact our customer. We've settled hundreds of claims together. John's attitude is... You've got to be quick, and you've got to be fair. Quick and fair. At State Farm, teamwork is what it's all about. We make a great team. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We're talking about late hits. In this play, the offensive team clipped after the runner was down. Assess a 15-yard penalty against the offense from the spot where the run ended. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We changed the way you saw the world. Now we've made a world of changes. Introducing the new Ford Explorer. The top-selling compact sport utility with standard dual airbags. The one with control track four-wheel drive for instant traction control automatically. Plus an engine that lets you go 100,000 miles before your first tune-up. The new Ford Explorer. Far and away, the best the world has to offer. I've always wanted to do this. With NFL Sunday Ticket on Direct TV, you get up to 13 regular season games live every Sunday. So if Washington is blowing out the box, to switch to the 49ers Saints game. But hey, is Emmett Smith breaking the rushing record? Are the Giants crushing the Eagles? You get it, not on cable, but with Direct TV and this. Now that's a game plan. To get NFL Sunday Ticket on the 18-inch DSS dish of your choice, call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. Hey, uh, Red Dog. Why? Do you ever wonder why we're here? Where? You know, here. Why we exist. No. Well, how come? I got better things to think about. But why are we the way we are? I mean, I'd give anything to be as big as you. True. You ain't big, but you're real quick. <laughs> quick? Yeah. I guess it all evens out then, huh? Well, that might be pushing it. Uh, Red Dog. Hey, hey, Red Dog. Yeah? Full moon tomorrow night. I'm there, buddy. Some of the capacity crowd here in Norman, Oklahoma tonight, over 75,000 strong, out to see this one. First time I've had a sellout here since 1989. And these are the numbers on the first quarter. 34 yards, passing 27 rushing. And as we said, Colorado held a 20 yards rushing first quarter. And even first quarter, really, if they're set for the missed field goal, it'd be 3-3. Pressure on Hessler, and he lobs it and overthrows Lipsis. Good heavens. Boy, he had him, and he was being team. He was not being selfish. He could have run that ball. Well, that's the strength of John Hessler. He has good mobility, and he can get out of the pocket. And he made that play against a &M last week because that was a touchdown pass on a scramble. But he just overthrew Matt Lipsis just a little bit too high. Well, you could see his head coach trying to calm him down, and he's upset with himself. Pressure, and they got it. Blocked right up the middle. Recovered at the 21-yard line. Malone, number 
49 with the block. Just comes free inside. Great field position for this OU offense. So let's see if the Sooners can capitalize. They lead three to nothing. Pitch goes to Moore, turns the corner, has five, now six yards. Murkison is out there to make the hit on him. As you look at Mitchell on the sideline, talking with his special teams members, saying where did he come from, or how did he get there, probably. You see Matt Russell up inside, he's just blitzing on every play inside. Gerald Moore with a good play on the outside, a good call again by Gary Nord to get away from the inside blitz, get outside. See Moore asking for points. Straight ahead with Gerald Moore and close to the first down. In fact, I think he has it. And Mike Tirico, let's check back with you. Ron, got an NCAA record on this McDonald's breakaway to Southern California. Keyshawn Johnson with this late third quarter catch goes over 100 yards for the 12th straight game. That breaks Aaron Turner's record. And for a cherry on the Sunday, he scored the touchdown. Southern Cal leads by 24. Long strider with that kind of speed. Mike. I've seen a lot of great receivers this year. He's among them. Well, the spot that they gave him, he didn't make it. It's going to be third down, less than a yard. They take it to the left side, and they'll have the first down with Gerald Moore. Just inside the 10-yard line with T.J. Cunningham holding on for dear life. That was a good tackle by T.J. Cunningham, number eight. Excellent tackle. Tackler, he was a receiver last year. He made a touchdown-saving tackle there. It was a sure tackle. Going to see number eight, T.J. Cunningham, with a good tackle because if he gets by him, Gerald Moore is in the end zone. First and goal, Oklahoma. This time from the eye. If the pitch goes back to Allen, he'll take it inside the five, and he's down to the three. Hicks made the tackle, but stamps over to Langston. Really good job of blocking up front. And a flag is down at the five. And it's going to be holding Oklahoma. You never like to see a holding call. And you know where that flag's at, what it is. As a coach, you just, you know you're giving up great field position and it's and a chance to knock it in from inside the five. So instead of a second down and goal at the three-yard line, it is going to be first down Oklahoma, and the ball is now resting just outside the 15-yard line. Oklahoma leading by a field goal, but they don't want three on this trip. They want seven. More in motion coming to the bottom of your screen, and it's a quarterback draw at the 10, at the 5, and Moore is down to the four-yard line. Roska finally made the stop on him. Put him in motion and spread everybody out. What they did again, Ron, was the motion outside was removing a linebacker. And you've got one linebacker inside, and he's blitzing inside, and the quarterback draws wide open. And that play is a direct uh, call off of the last time they ran motion because they saw the adjustment of Colorado. And if the young quarterback had waited on Langston, he might have taken it into the end zone. To the right side, at the two, at the one. No touchdown. They're going to see a foot away, James Allen. It's third down. Both the Oklahoma running backs, James Allen and Gerald Moore, are getting off to a good start tonight. Gerald Moore, again, leading on the block. It's the backside pull also by Milton Overton. Ooh. Looked like a storm. Third down, about a foot away or less. Gets him set right up the middle. Touchdown, Eric Moore.
Jeremy Alexander tries to put Oklahoma up 10 to nothing over Colorado. He got it. So let's take a break. They are standing and they are cheering because this man's team has just bolted on top 10 to nothing over number four, Colorado. We'll be right back. What takes business presentations to a whole new level? The Intel Pentium processor. It gives your notebook the power to make PC software come alive. With video and graphics that help your presentations speak for themselves. The Intel Pentium processor. comes into your life at the exact moment you're ready for it. It's not coincidence. Aurora by Oldsmobile. See what happens when you demand better. Aurora. A strange event occurs once. It's coincidence, perhaps. But if it occurs twice, what then? Two different households, two different guys. The same dream. Quarter pounds with cheese with two bucks at McDonald's. McDonald's. I gotta call Jerry. It's McDonald's two-buck conversion. Two big, beefy, juicy quarter pounders with cheese for only two dollars right now at McDonald's. Busy again. It's three in the morning. Who's Jerry talking to? Jerry! Jerry! ESPN's presentation of CFA Primetime is brought to you by Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile retailers. 100, 100 years of football, six national championships, two of them, 74 and 75, back-to-back, -back, and it featured names like Switzer, the Selman Brothers, and Speedy Joe Washington. Well, I don't need to tell you, 2,000 fans came in here last night just to watch the Sooners walk through. The student section was filled as soon as they opened it, two hours before game time today. And folks, this 10 nothing lead, these guys will stay here till 6 in the morning if they have to, but they're loving what they're seeing. Big opening on the return, and Henry is going to take it back out over the 40, and they're going to say shoved out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Key play in this last series for Oklahoma was a blocked punt. Terrence Malone, number 49, just a missed blocking assignment because no one picks him up. He just runs straight through to block that punt and to set up that great field position and that score and make Howard Schnellenberger look like Dave Ruth calling his shot. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it's early in this ball game, and Colorado has had some things offensively. When they quit misfiring, they're going to take this ball right down the field. You know, and the point that you made early on in the first quarter also is Colorado has been such a, a team of such big plays. And they have not been able to get that going just yet. Well, they're there on the outside. Option pass. Looking for Savoy overthrown at the 35-yard line. It was Larry Bush having the cover. What Rick Neuheisel would like to see is John Hessler just get a little bit more in control. He's just a little bit high on his throws right now, but they're open. They're out there, and they're open, and Rick Neuheisel knows it. He knows he's got a good plan against this, against this Oklahoma defense. You know, Mike, you and I talked about the weather coming over here. We've had wind warnings yesterday and also today, and coming this direction, he's been long on three di two different passes. Uh, he's got the wind in his back. Uh, yep, he sure does. Short drop this time, and the pass complete to Savoy. It'll be a gain of about three yards, and it's going to be a third down, as Wesley came up to make the hit. And this is what we're talking about. Uh, you know how the wind blows here in Oklahoma. And those are huge flags, and they're outstretched completely. So uh, I guess just like this, the song, the wind comes sweeping down the plane, and it's sweeping off the plane tonight. What song's that? Uh, you better not say that to, to local folks. All right, you got it. Oh, you know the title. Wait, Oklahoma. Oh, I got you got it. All right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
on third down. Sets it up deep over the middle, has a man, tripped in, incomplete. And again, he was just a little too tall, and I think Wendell Davis got a piece of it. Well, the other thing is Cedric Jones pressured him from the backside. The all-time leader in sacks here at Oklahoma puts a lot of pressure on. You're going to see the route. Ray Carruth down the middle. Open. Just can't get him the football. That's a catchable ball there, but may have been tipped. I think Wendell Davis did get a piece of it. Now let's see if the blocking setup is different for Andy Mitchell this time. At the 10, and takes an Oklahoma bounce and goes into the end zone. So, Colorado has a 41-yard kick return that they don't take advantage of. We'll be right back. say that when Aurora was ready to go, so were you. See what happens when you demand better? Aurora by Oldsmobile. Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Call 1-800-32-SMART. About Smart Lease by GMAC. It just might give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Don't let a new car payment get you all wound up. Call 1-800-32-SMART about Smart Lease by GMAC. It can put a new spin on affordability. Silver bullet, it shipped cold to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. In a rivalry like this, rankings don't matter. Miami versus top ranked Florida State next Saturday at 7:30, only on ESPN. Well, now for our Sega Sports students of the game from Colorado, defensive tackle Kerry Hicks. He has uh, already graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in psychology with a 3.0 GPA. And from Oklahoma, senior guard Milton Overton, he is a four-point graduate student majoring in sociology. Sega Sports congratulates these fine student athletes. Ron Franklin along with Mike Godfrey and Mike Adamway from Norman, Oklahoma. Beautiful night. They have predicted rain. Looks like we're going to miss it. Temperature very mild and wind coming in the face of Oklahoma right now. Step shot. Hit. Ball is on the ground. And I believe Colorado recovered at the 17-yard line. They did. Kerry Hicks is on the football. Daryl Price also hitting Eric Moore out of the shotgun, causing that turnover. Eric Moore set back to pass. There's Daryl Price, number 99. He strips the football in his left hand. Kerry Hicks recovers it. Colorado in business. That's how fast momentum can change. So Colorado's offense meeting on the sideline with uh, Rick Neuheisel. As you look at Eric Moore on the far sideline. And a reminder that every 10, 30, and 50 minutes after the hour, ESP will update you on all the scores. Things going on in the world of sports. Marlon Barnes, number nine, the lone setback this time. And Barnes gets the handoff, and he is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. And I'll tell you, Cedric Jones is teaming with Baron Tanner. Mike, Cedric Jones, between pressuring and a sack and three individual tackles, he's just been everywhere. They're playing him inside eye of the tight end, and he's moving down inside. See how inside he is on this play? Steps over, gets in on the tackle, and both defensive tackles do Atkins and Tanner very active in the inside. It's a loss of one, so it's going to be second down and 11. Marlon Barnes, again, the only setback for the Buffalo. 
pressure from the backside. He gets hit. The ball is loose, and they are calling an incomplete pass as the flag goes down. And it was Cedric Jones who almost took his head off. Holding is called against Colorado. Talking to some pro scouts about Cedric Jones. They say he can be special. They compare him a lot to Mike Mamula, only they think he's a better athlete, better size at 6'4", 263. He can come off that corner and pass rush. Mike, as good as that Colorado offensive line is, they better get some help or, or Hessler. It, it, well, those the, are some tough shots well, right the there. Strength of the offensive line of Colorado is the center and two guards. Both tackles are really first-year starters, Kyle Smith and Melvin Thomas, so they're inexperienced. And Cedric Jones is taking advantage of that. So a timeout that is uh, being called, I believe, by Col yes, Colorado is calling the timeout as Hessler had come over to the near sideline. We'll take it with it. Ten to nothing, Oklahoma. selection of Nissan trucks and quality pre-owned vehicles. You'll save big because price is no object during our way over stock super sale at Empire Lakewood Nissan in Lakewood. Retirement? No problem. Our savings are socked away in CDs. And in 15 years, that money's going to be... Putting like all your retirement savings into CDs could leave you in an awkward position. Because over the long term, CDs alone may not earn enough interest for the kind of retirement you want. But if you get into a mix of investments with more risk, maybe including mutual funds, you could be in a better place. Bank One Securities Corporation can show you how. Here's what's happened today and tonight in the National League. Colorado has clinched at least a tie of the wild card. Chicago is eliminated. Houston still alive for the wild card. The Dodgers and San Diego play in about 10 minutes. Now, tomorrow on ESPN2, you'll see Houston at Chicago for sure, and the Yankees in Toronto, if it means anything. And then on ESPN, after the NASCAR race, any game that has significance in determining one of the eight playoff spots in Major League Baseball, you will see coverage of. Go back to Ron. 10 to nothing. Oklahoma leads with 9 minutes and 23 seconds left to play until halftime. Mike, the fumble just a moment ago gave CU the ball at the 17-yard line. They have not been able to take advantage of good opportunities tonight. On the last series, a 41-yard kickoff return. They didn't get anything out of it. Here, they got to get points at some time. Yeah, they do. Credit Oklahoma's defense. They run so well on defense, they can make big plays. Hessler has it complete at the 19-yard line and then shoved out of bounds. But that's what's there, Ron. It's uh, just be patient on the outside. James Kidd with the 10-yard completion here. Looks like Oklahoma's so concerned about the Colorado speed on the outside. So now it comes down to a third down, and they still need 11 yards to pick up the first down. They've got to take it down inside the OU8. Confusion in that huddle. You can see Thomas, Nioli, Stoltenberg, and now Colorado's going to call a timeout. Well, that's a problem sometimes when you send verbal signals in. Sometimes they get it mixed up, and you got to spend the timeout. So we're going to take it with them. 9-16 left until halftime. We'll be right back. When traffic congestion changes, the threats to your car's engine change. That's why Quaker State has engineered intelligent oil. Oil that senses the changing threats in your engine and adapts its own molecular structure for continuous protection. So whenever the driving conditions change, so does Quaker State, the intelligent oil for longer engine life. Now, get up to 660 back by mail when you buy a case of Quaker State or up to 275 back by mail when you buy five quarts. Springfield, 
We've been making tires for more than 100 years. And at our age, some might suggest we're over the hill. They're absolutely right. Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. Hey, it's me again. The little guy. Back with TGI Friday's three new Cajun dishes. Just take a look at this. Friday's new Cajun angels. Juicy shrimp wrapped in bacon, rolled in Cajun spices, and served with a Creole mustard sauce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're called Cajun angels because the people at Friday's know how much I hate the word shrimp. Try one of Friday's new Cajun dishes and get a free Oreo madness for dessert. Show 10 to nothing. Colorado uh, still with the third down and about 11 and a half, almost 12 yards uh, to pick up the first down. And they had to call a timeout because the play that came in, there was confusion. See if he got it worked out. One of five on third down conversions tonight. It's Barnes in motion. Pass over the middle. It is caught. The boy touchdown Colorado. John Hessler needs in this ball game, Ron, a completion like that to get back started again. Well, now Colorado is going to be called for a 15-yard penalty for too much celebration. Clint Moore, number 66 at left tackle, did a really good job on Cedric Jones that time to make sure his young quarterback had time to get the pass away. Clint standing on the sideline. Now this game is just absolutely going down a, a real steep hill there for a bit, and all of a sudden, uh, Mike, the, the last minute on the clock is just is taking 20 minutes to play. I like what Colorado's doing offensively. I really feel like they've got a pretty good game plan in this game. Just have not executed early. Have some things open in the passing game. John Laurie has called his officials together. Mike, what could they possibly be talking about? There are four flags down in the end zone. Well, what John was saying, if you can read his lips on Sportsmanlike, called against Colorado, and it will be stepped off on the kickoff. And that's where the benefit of the wind that you're back on the kickoff should for help sure. Colorado a little bit. For sure. <laughs> Howard, Howard just summed up the situation for us. Does anybody know what the hell's going on? And he's exactly right. Howard, we're asking the same question. Well, I think they give them their choice, don't they? Yes, they point? do give them their choice. And that might be the holdup. able to force the turnover and turn it into points. They've elected to take this on Portsmouth like here. Well, I did see a personal foul call, too. Maybe that will be assessed on the kickoff. We'll have to see. I was, I was commenting to you today about the games that I've watched. I do not see the celebration thing called as much as I saw early in the season. I'll tell you, we're going to show you a couple of things uh, after the extra point attempt here, Mike, that... It may kind of sum up why the flag was thrown. Vostaritian to attempt an extra point of 35 yards.
plenty of distance and he's got it so it's 10 7 now let's go back and uh, show you the touchdown good protection here phil savoy with a catch and let's check john hessler after the touchdown the only thing we can figure is that the Hessler okay. with the celebration uh, and that's when the flags were thrown. I hate to think that flag was called on that. Now we'll see if the personal foul goes. ESPN is your home for college football again next Saturday. At 11.30, it all starts with college game day. At 12.30, Michigan takes on Northwestern. At 3.30 and 7, catch up on all the scores and highlights. And at 7.30, see if Miami can slow down the Florida State Seminole. At 10.30, we put a period on the day. All of that next Saturday. So to repeat the sequence that occurred, 15-yard penalty, they stepped it off. The extra point attempt had to come from the 25, which made it a 35-yard attempt, and Boscovich uh, knocked it home, so we have a 10-7 ball game. And there was not a personal foul call. Eric Moore waiting on the sideline as P.J. Mills is the deep man. But Jason Leslie out of Galashes, Texas, will kick it off. Two yards deep, he'll return it. Tries to turn the corner and shoved out just around the 20. Mike Tirico, let's go back to you. Ron, one of the oddest plays of the day. Jeremy Borsif, the punter for Louisville, is back. The punt is partially blocked. Goes up in the air and comes backwards. So Kerry Cobb heads up, picks up the bouncing ball, and takes it in. A Memphis touchdown. A Memphis leads by four. <laughs> Oh, by one of those kind of days. 9.02 to play until the halftime. Sooners by three. Allen to the right side. Still going beyond the 45 to the 46. Donnell Liamidi finally puts a stopper on him at the 45. Oklahoma's using some pretty good splits by their offensive line, trying to spread that Colorado defense out. There's the splits by the center and the guard and the tackle. You see how wide they are? Now the give to James Allen. Breaking into the secondary, J.R. Conrad, number 78 with a block. That's a gain of 23 yards. Look at the yards rushing. Now 76 for OU. play action and Moore will take it for five yards out of bounds at the 50 yard line Liam Eady came over to shove him out and even if you don't pick up much on that play it keeps you honest and plants the seed doesn't it Mike it, it makes your defensive end stay at home in your secondary Eric Moore when he played little league football his coach nicknamed him snake he didn't know why said a little while later, a couple years later, he saw some films of Kenny Stabler and known as the Snake, and he said he admired Kenny Stabler from that point on, so he wants to be known as Eric the Snake Moore. In honor of Ken the Snake Stabler. There's a great, great resemblance as far as from the same side they throw, being left-handed, but in speed, I don't think so. No. Trap play right up the middle. 5, 10, 12, 13 yards. Gerald Moore finally tackled by Roska. I'll tell you, the play calling and the offensive line for OU, outstanding. The line splits are again helping the University of Oklahoma because they're splitting them out wide. You see the big split between the guard and the center and the tackle. A good block by James Allen, and then Gerald Moore is not your typical fullback. Once he gets in the secondary, he's like a running back out of the tailback position. Good speed. They're going to say officially 14 yards in the play and another Oklahoma first down. And now Eric Moore either didn't like what he saw or was confused about the play that was called, and he will call a timeout. NFL game being on Sunday when Boomer and the boys explore the brashest of the Cowboys, Michael Irvin. 
what's wrong in Pittsburgh, and a reversal of fortunes in New Orleans. NFL game day Sunday, 11.45 a.m. Sharp. Mike Adamley, let's uh, go down to the sideline and check with you. Well, Ron, while watching Oklahoma lose to BYU in last year's Copper Bowl, Howard Schnellenberger's first observation was how out of shape the Sooners were. So this year, an edict. Trim the fat by 1,000 pounds in this offensive line. Answer the call. Left tackle, let's take a look at this graphic. Left tackle, tackle Harry Stamps lost 30 pounds. Milton Overton cut his body fat to 5%. Center Chuck Langston is trimmer and slimmer. Right guard and right tackle Joe Carollo and J.R. Conrad lost 55 pounds combined. They may not be a mean machine, but they are certainly a lean machine this year. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. 30, 12, 16, 26, and 29 pounds. And as we mentioned, first time this group has been together in a full year because of injuries. Allen in motion. Little counterplay to Moore, and that's not going anywhere. As Ryan Olson stepped right up into the hole and made the hit on him. Well, Ryan Olson stayed square in the line of scrimmage, number 55. Read that play, got off the block, kept his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, pad under pad, and made that play. You just joined us, 10 to 7, Oklahoma. Sooners jumped out on top, 10 to nothing. And Colorado took advantage of an OU turnover. As Eric Moore was hit from behind and fumbled the ball, and that's how they got their seven. Now, P.J. Mills is the go-to receiver for Oklahoma. Second down, it's a draw play, though, and a great job defensively as Allen cannot go anywhere. Matt Russell from the middle linebacking spot is there to just devour him. Danny Hope, the offensive line coach from Oklahoma, said he throws his body around, talking about Matt Russell, number 16, who makes the tackle here. He says, every time you look at the tape and they uncover the ball carry, you always find number 16 around there. He actually got a little help from Chuck Langston. You can see Chuck was trying to shove him out of his lane sideways and shove him kind of into the ball carry. So it's third down, and the line to make is the 26 and a half of Colorado. to the middle by Alexander and he guessed right with the inside move and it's a first down Oklahoma A.J. Kristoff the defensive coordinator Colorado was concerned about the speed and the reception ability of the tight ends Steven Alexander number 80 is just going to curl that's an option route now once he catches it he moves back to the inside and look at the yardage he picked up after the catch for the first down Mikey 6'4", almost 230. In high school, he was the state high jump champ at 6'8", and also played basketball. Very good athlete. He gained 20 yards in that last play. This running play right here, nothing. Number 33, Ron Murkison, is sitting right in the gap. And that shows you in that last play the strength of the arm of Eric Moore. He's got a strong, very strong arm drilling that ball into Stephen Alexander. I've been impressed with Derek Moore. Now, they like to play Derek McGee a little bit in the second quarter, but time's running out in this quarter, 6.06 in the second quarter here, but Derek McGee will see some action, the backup quarterback for Oklahoma. He was the starter last year. Second down and 10, the ball at the Colorado 20. Russell shows blitz, but he stays at home. Pass over the middle, two call, Juwan Penny was open at the 10-yard line, but he just kind of got that one, got the nose up, and it went skyward. Juwan, a senior out of Tulsa, Washington. Not quite tall enough to get that one at 5'11". Boy, when you run in that kind of route, too, those receivers hate to get stretched out like that because that's when you get your ribs taken away from you. third and ten. Four out of five on third down conversions tonight for the Sooners. Right over the middle, has a man, touchdown, Jerome Penny. He was tall enough that time. A 
Well, you talk about the celebration rule. These guys are calling it tonight. It's the only crew I've seen lately. Bill Howard talking to Garland Ole, the, the field judge. Jawan Penny run a, was running a post route. Eric Moore with a good throw, a high throw, but a good catch. And that, I guess he went to the crowd, and that's why this call is. Juan Penny, after he makes the touchdown, he goes to the crowd, and that's the penalty. And Jeremy Alexander tries to make it 17 points for the Sooners. And he does. And, Ron, where this will hurt Oklahoma is the fact that they now have to kick off into the wind. So Colorado should end up with pretty good position. Sooner Schooner will ride again. I'll tell you what, let, let's take that play all the way to the end, Mike, and, and finish your discussion of what happened at the end of the play. Juan Penny just heads to the crowd. He's, I guess, showing the football. Sooner Schooner makes a successful run. And it's 17 to 7. Nine plays, 78 yards, three minutes and 20 seconds. Penny with the 20-yard reception. The key will be where Colorado ends up with this football. With the penalty on Oklahoma, driving them back to kick it off into the wind, Colorado should end up in pretty good position. Now, here's, here's the thing. Jeremy Alexander's been kicking it 10 yards deep into the end zone, but he's kicking it into the wind. And I'm with you. It's, uh, let's see how much this penalty winds up hurting them, because they're going to be kicking off from their own 20-yard line. celebrations because it has time under no <laughs> I think they're going to be let known we're not doing this anymore guys so Alexander tees the ball up at the 20 Oklahoma was a slight underdog coming into this ball game tonight they jumped out in front 10 to nothing and they have just stretched that lead back to a 10 point margin Colorado ranked number four in the nation. And the Buffaloes might be a little bit shocked right now. Troutman and Lyndon Henry back in a deep safety. is a good kickoff into the win. Gonna come all the way to the 15, so that would have been to the goal line, and it's Troutman, and look at the hit on Troutman. He will not make it to the 30-yard line. Well, the final round coverage continues tomorrow for the PGA Buick Challenge. Fred Hunt and Steve Stryker tied for the lead at 11 under par. And from Tanglewood Country Club, the Cadillac Senior PGA Tour Vantage Cup Championship, Hale Irwin and Dave Stockton tied at 10 under par. All tomorrow, final round coverage here on ESPN. Again, Marlon Barnes is the setback, replacing... Troutman. He gets the handoff and he gets chased. Martin Chase at the line of scrimmage is right there to wrap him up. Maybe a loss of one. And he played defense for Oklahoma last year as a true freshman. This year he's a sophomore. Martin Chase, 6'2, 278. He's the backup defensive tackle to Baron Tanner. So Oklahoma trying to keep fresh people in the line. The other thing that's happened also, Mike, is uh, Arthur. Atkins with an injured knee. Chase is playing on a regular basis because Atkins, it's going to be a couple of weeks before he gets back. Rushing yards at Colorado. They, they've got to find a way to run the football. Well, let's see if Tanner wins his point here. He's pointing, saying, I was drawn offside.
Tuna Face will not carry for that one. Five-yard penalty. Second and five. Pass is caught by Savoy at the 45-yard line. And Mike Tirico, let's check with you again. Ron, after showing early signs of the three starters suspended, a slow start for USC. They come on strong. A touchdown run for Laval Woods, his second of the game. Their defense is allowed just 27 points this year. They're 4-0. Seven points to ball game will win you a lot of contests. Our situation, four minutes and 35 seconds left until the halftime. Oklahoma by 10. Barnes going to be hit and knocked down for a loss, and it's Brent DeClaysi. The senior out of Midwest City, just right up the road. He's not a flashy linebacker. He had the toughest transition because last year he played on a tight end. Number 47, Brent DeClaysi just taking on the block, keeping his outside arm free, making the tackle on Marlon Barnes. Brent has played for a long time here. He came in and saw playing time early because he had the outstanding ability. And uh, you've got to know that's a thrill when you live in the area. And, of course, as I said, Midwest City is just right up the road. But he's been an outstanding player today. Pass almost intercepted. That was Broderick Simpson, number 51, who cut in front. And I think the boy was distracted just enough that he uh, couldn't hold on. Almost had a chance at that interception. Broderick Simpson's another linebacker of those three that can really run. His motor's always running. He's got a good hand on it to tip it away from Phil Savoy. So it's third down. And the line to make for the Buffaloes is just inside the OU 45. Good protection this time, and he has the pass on the comeback, and that's Chris Anderson. And that'll be enough for the Colorado first down. Rod Henderson and Darius Johnson combined on the stop. Good tackle by Rod Henderson. He's 200 pounds as a defensive back, very aggressive. Mike, he played some linebacker last year. Yeah, he's a good-sized player to have in the secondary. When he hits, it brings a load. So they say officially a gain of 12 in that play. Brings it out to Barnes, out of the backfield. Inside the 45, now inside the 40. Peters finally puts a stop on him. With all the underneath throws that Colorado's able to make right now, here's a little screen to Marlon Barnes. Gets a little bit of a push in the back there on Brent DeQuazy by Melvin Thomas, not called. But with the short passing game that Colorado has effectively established, the deep end may be there real soon for John Hester. Colorado down by 10, trying to cut it back to three. Barnes right up the middle, almost broke it. Mike Tirico, let's check back with you. Ron, as Colorado works towards the end zone, we work towards the GMAC halftime report. We'll tell you about the nation's longest Division I winning streak derailed and the update on the Major League Baseball wild card playoff situation, all coming up on the GMAC halftime report at the break. Back to you, Ron. Okay, Michael, we look forward to hearing that. 17 to 7, our scores were about to go under two minutes. They have just had a ball in his first half here in Norman, but they're right now pleading for this defense to step up big. Third down and short. Barnes bounces outside, breaks the tackle, and he's going to be inside the 25, and it's first and 10 at the 22-yard line. We were talking about Rod Henderson a minute ago, how he brings a load. I'll tell you, he got hit by a load here. Marlon Barnes, number nine, just ran over Rod Henderson in the secondary to pick up this first down. The give to Marlon Barnes, and you're going to see number 17, Rod Henderson, right there. He just ran right through the tackle. Good, strong running by Marlon Barnes. Boy, that was impressive. You take out a guy like Troutman, who is still affected. But again, Barnes, you don't miss anything. This time, OU is there, and they're ready. It's Roderick Simpson, number 51, is the man, the first one to strike him. What's set up here for Colorado is 
because they're running that outside zone play, which is a straight handoff to the left side, the nakeds are open for John Hessler to roll out. There's Simpson, and we talked about his quickness, and he just gets into the body, and that's the way you stop. A short, stocky player like that, Mike, you got to take his legs away from him. Ten plays on this guy. Oklahoma with the blitz. Play action is caught by Savoy. Going to be short of the first down as Bush made a good open field tackle. And now it's going to be third down at about one. Credit that completion to the offensive line because they gave good protection. Phil Savoy, you see the big cushion on the outside again, afraid of the speed. That's Larry Bush, number 31. Colorado's receivers have such great speed. They're honoring and respecting it with those cushions. The good blocking by the offensive line. Again, it's third down and short. Barnes, right up the middle. And I, well, I don't know. He's close. Simpson made the hit on him. Never been a fan of the one back in short yardage. Always like a lead blocker. You see the officials holding on to the football to make sure it doesn't get moved at all because it's that close. We're talking about inches either way. And I'd say that's about four or five inches. It's going to be fourth down, Colorado. Yeah, I'd go for it here. I'd go for the first down. You can see Rick Neuheisel wants a timeout, and this will be the last one for the Colorado Buffaloes. It's going to be a tough decision for Rick Neuheisel right here, especially out of timeout. Oh, well, we've got a couple of seconds for any of you keeping track with the baseball playoff picture. ESPN, the place to be for the finish. Now, the Angels win tonight at 1.30. Tomorrow on ESPN2, you'll see the Yankees and the Blue Jays. The Angels lose tonight at 2 o'clock on ESPN2. You'll see Houston at Chicago. And then at 4 o'clock on ESPN, we've got the National League race with San Francisco and Colorado joined in progress and continuing coverage of Houston and Chicago. Baseball and lots of it tomorrow. Howard Schnellenberger's ball club up by 10, 17 to 7. This is big right here on this decision because if you pick up the first down, then you got to throw the ball into the ground, stop the clock, and give you a play or two to be able to throw into the end zone. This changes the whole theory of the thing without a timeout. Now you got to really use good clock management. But I'm sure that's what Rick Neuheisel just did. They not only discussed this play, but the what ifs. Well, they've got a couple plays going here. They've got the one that's to pick up the first down, and they're ready right away with a no huddle with a second play. I think this would be a quarterback sneak here. Two tight ends, two wide receivers, and Marlon Barnes the only setback. Quarterback sneak, and he didn't get much, but I think he got it. Now they need to get set again and be ready to go with the next play. We're so far away, uh, we would need some uh, carrier pigeon to tell us whether he made it or not. This uh, this is now the highest press box I've ever done a game in, and I have to say the most unique experience is uh, I've never seen the top of a punt before. And here's where we are. See those speakers where those lights are in the very middle of that? Uh, yeah, we're, we're higher than that. We're, uh, we're higher than a Georgia pine. <laughs> So they got the first down. It is first and 10, Colorado. With 26, now 25 seconds, the clock is running. Kessler sets the throw. In the end zone, got him for the touchdown. Ray Peru. Colorado comes right back. That's the best kind of clock management you can have. Score on the first play after the first down. That's a good job by Colorado, Rick Neuheisel, and offensive coordinator Carl Durrell. Taking the first down, they had the second play already called. They're up there, and there's still 17 seconds to go on the clock. And Mike, that drive's going to be like 71 yards. That was very, very efficient. Boscovician with the extra point. He 
is right down the middle. So 17 seconds left until halftime. And it is 17 to 14. Ray Carruth, number 21, just with a corner route. John Hester with good presence in the pocket. Good protection by the offensive line, given the time. And Ray Carruth beating number 17, Rod Henderson, for the touchdown. It's been a good first half. Boy, has it ever. And Rick Neuheisel happy with that call. And you know, Mike, the thing, I think the point that we need to make on both sides of the line is uh, young John is being congratulated over here. And on the other side of the field, we're talking about guys that have not played major college football. And, you know, what a, both teams undefeated in, in front of a national television audience, 75,000 folks, and they haven't acted like they even know that there's other stuff's going on. Well, Rick Neuheisel had a good point. He said, I was always a backup quarterback for a long time at UCLA, and Homer Smith, who was the quarterback coach explained to him he said you always have to be ready because you're one play away so you have to prepare yourself mentally even though you're not getting as many snaps in practice prepare yourself mentally john hester has done that he's ready to go and jason leslie to kick it off for cu and with the wind at his back, drives it five yards deep into the end zone. Mike Tirico. In talking about backup quarterbacks, Georgia lost Mike Bobo, their starter, having to turn to former tailback and wide receiver Heinz Ward today. Tough to make that start against the Alabama defense, which scored 21 points, including this Cedric Samuel touchdown. Bama cut out the dog. Mike, I'll tell you what, if you got as many raises in your life as positions, Heinz Ward's had to play at Georgia you'd really be a rich guy. He's played like six different positions. Wide receiver, quarterback, tailback. They have used him at everything down to Georgia. Numbers on Hester in the first half, 14 of 20, 140 yards, and two touchdowns. And Oklahoma will run out the clock and they head for the locker room. That's the end of the first half with our score. Oklahoma 17 and Colorado 14. Now let's join Mike Tirico for the GMAC halftime report. Mike. Okay, Ron, Sooners winless in their last six against the Bucks, lead by three at halftime. Coming up on the GMAC halftime report, all the scores and highlights from the final college football Saturday in September. And we'll get you back out to Norman. Chris Lee and Craig will put some of the day's action in perspective as well as their thoughts on the first half, which sees Oklahoma at home leading the Bucks by three. Don't go away. A car engine has as little as a thousandth of an inch of motor oil protecting its parts. But friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporize, weakening its ability to protect vital parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility, fight vaporization, and provide complete engine protection, no matter what you drive. Develop sense attract shocks to smooth out the road for a comfortable ride. But sense attract doesn't stop there. It's the only shock that also gives you extra control when you need it most. Sense attract shocks and struts, only by Monroe, for comfort and control. fresh comes into your life at the exact moment you're ready for it. It's not coincidence. Aurora by Oldsmobile. See what happens when you demand better. Aurora. This halftime report is brought to you by GMAC. Oklahoma leads Colorado by three. Welcome to the Halftime Report. The longest 1A winning streak belonged to Penn State at 20. Here comes Wisconsin for their first trip ever into Happy Valley against Jopa's team. Boy, was this a surprise. Paterno coaching in game number 500 as an assistant and a head coach. Badgers 
up in the fourth, 10-3. Darryl Bevel, 21 yards to Tony Simmons, 17-3. Bevel, a great game. Penn State down 17-9 after they score. Trying to come back again. They get the ball back. Richardson to the tight end, Keith Oakmer. Incomplete. And Paterno and Penn State shocked by Barry Alvarez and Wisconsin snapping the 20-game win streak. Richardson was snapped, sacked four times. Penn State held under 100 yards rushing for the first time in 46 games. Coming in, another big game today. Notre Dame at Ohio State. Lou Holtz watched this game on the sidelines. Third quarter, Ron Paulus looking for Derek Mays, intercepted by Sean Springs. Ohio State starting to take control of this game. Bobby Hoying finds Terry Glenn, and it's a foot race, and no one's going to win that race with Glenn. An 83-yard score, his second of the day. Ohio State scored on five consecutive possessions. Lou Holtz's team gave up 45. No Holtz Notre Dame team has ever given up that many. Brian Greasy's Bob's son he had good numbers in his first Michigan start and the win. Southern Cal, we mentioned the three suspensions. They did a good job on the ground, and through the air, they found Keyshawn Johnson, who set an NCAA record on this play, 12th straight game, over 100 yards receiving. This 60-yard score, part of USC's 31-0 win. SC is the nation's best-scoring defense. They've only allowed 27 points this year. Oregon State quarterback Tim Alexander combined for 322 yards of total offense. Not enough against Washington. Tonight in the Commonwealth, Auburn taking on Kentucky. War Eagle. Heisman candidate Stephen Davis. A chance to explode with this quick burst through the Wildcat defense. 32 yards, one of two touchdowns on the day. That put Auburn up 21. They won by 21, despite Mo Williams' 164 yards. We'll tell you why later, but Arkansas will be alone atop the SEC West as they close out Vanderbilt. Florida ran just 59 plays, second lowest in the Spurrier era, but he wins 73 of his first 100 games as a Florida coach. Tennessee shuts out Oklahoma State. LSU, South Carolina, fourth quarter, 20 to 13, South Carolina. Tigers driving Jamie Howard, looking for Shedrick Wilson, playing on a severely sprained knee, 19-yard score. Donardo kicks the point, tied at 20. Stephen Florio's 53-yard chance to of the Gamecocks, an upset win is not to be, so LSU is 2-0-1 in conference. That's why Arkansas is alone atop the West. We showed you the highlights, six Georgia turnovers as Alabama shuts out the dogs between the hedges. Number two, Nebraska home for Washington State. Washington State scored first, led 7-0 after one, then Tommy Frazier. An option to tie the game at seven. Frazier accounted for three touchdowns on the day, including this 20-yarder. He threw one as well. The nation's fourth-ranked rushing defense, Washington State, gave up 428 on the ground. Nebraska wins by 14. Bruce Snyder's 40th win, the winningest coach in Kansas State history. They have the second-best scoring defense. Texas beat SMU 21 straight Southwest Conference openers for the Longhorns. Baylor beats Texas Tech. They haven't lost a game since 92 when they've led at halftime. Virginia has now beaten Wake Forest 12 straight. And North Carolina State has to win their last six games to be eligible to go to a bowl. It's their worst start since 1971. Let's go to Norman, talk about this day and this night with Chris Lee and Craig. Mike, thank you. The wind really starting to kick up here. This is as wild a scene as they've had in Norman since 85. That's going to be a factor, both the wind and the crowd in the second half. Two great heavyweights going at it, each team answering the other with a big drive. But early on, Craig, the Oklahoma defense setting the tone. Well, the coaching staff felt like OU's defense was better than Colorado's, and that they would not need to blitz a whole lot on the John Hessler. And when you play the sound defense that they have and the aggressiveness up front, you really don't need to have the blitz package. Cedric Jones has been a man among boys on the field so far. John Hessler, early in the game, gets busted right here. And this is the kind of play that puts something in the back of Hessler's mind saying, do I? to take the next step. Cedric Jones told his teammates before the game, it's my birthday, fellas. Let's celebrate it. The party starts at 7.45 p.m., not a.m., and I'm going to have quarterbacks for my birthday. So look at John Hester. Really impressed me. I was on the sideline. He got hit three times. I thought he was coming out of the ball game. He's very tough. But the key game for a play for Oklahoma was the block punt. Now, let me tell you why they blocked this punt. The center had to snap the ball against the wind. And Oklahoma had time to snap, and it hung against the wind. That's why they had time. Now, here comes the quarterback draw. The man in motion comes. They, they blitz the middle linebacker, and Eric Moore hits it. Great call and a well-designed play in the clutch for Oklahoma. Eric Moore, the freshman, a streak shooter, and he has certainly been hot tonight. 
Guys, now to other games. USC blanking Arizona State despite the suspensions, which include two defensive starters. You have to be impressed. Reminds me of Nebraska. Nebraska had to deal with an as a team when Lawrence Phillips was suspended from the ball club. They lose their key players there. Keyshawn Johnson, their superstar playmaker, sets up the pace and does it for them. One thing about Florida, you got to say this. If you're going to beat Florida, Ole Miss showed you the way. Keep the football away from their offense. They had 57 plays, the least amount since Burr has been there. If you're going to beat Florida, that's the way to do it. Ohio State and Notre Dame, the big game this afternoon. The Buckeyes, explosive offense. How do you handicap them against Penn State now? I think Ohio State beats Penn State. I said that several weeks ago, and I thought they would do it. The power, overall power of Ohio State eventually put too much pressure on Notre Dame, and that's when you ended up having the mistake by the Irish. And also, Ohio State's so good, they're going to score five times against Penn State. Nobody can stop Hoying and Glenn and George. They're very, very good. Where does Penn State go from here? Obviously held under 100 yards. Does this spell bad things for them for the rest of the season? No, I think what it's going to spell is it's going to spell doom for somebody else, potentially Michigan down the road. Who's going to beat Ohio State? You think Michigan beats them down the road perhaps, but Penn State's a spoiler. Yeah, but one thing about Penn State, the all of them never losing at home in the Big Ten, done. That's it for them. It's Ohio State and USC taking steps closer to the Rose Bowl. Meanwhile, fans in the know throwing tortillas here. No more oranges. This is for the Fiesta Bowl. The winner here in the second half takes a big step for that game in Tempe. Mike Tirico ahead with more scores and highlights for the second half coming up. Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Call 1-800-32-SMART. About Smart Lease by GMAC. It just might give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Don't let a new truck payment stretch you to the limit. Call 1-800-32-SMART about Smart Lease by GMAC. It keeps new vehicles well within reach. Everybody figures that dogs like to chase after things. Well, we do. To a point. But not over Come along. over Come along. again. Come along. As for me, wrote, well, I don't go chasing after nothing that don't have soft hair, big eyes, red dog, bold yet too easy to drink, and a real nice set of Come here, Daddy. teeth. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Chances are it will outlast your car, and your furnace, and your roof. There's no telling what your mowing faucet might outlast. Mow it. Buy it for looks. Buy it for life. This GMAC halftime report is presented by GMAC Smartly. Watch low monthly payments on a new GM vehicle. Call 1-800-32-SMART. Oklahoma up three. Prairie View, this could be the night that they set the all-division record for the most consecutive losses in college football at 51. That's one side of the story of the game in Dallas. The other is Eddie Robinson looking for career win, 399 junior running back Jeff Nichols. A 26-yard score. Grambling takes a 21-0 lead. We have a good quarterback, Kendrick Nord. 21-yard pass to Solomon Thompson. Grambling a 35-0 halftime lead, since then extending it. So it looks like Robinson's on his way to win 399. If this score holds up, he goes for number 400 next week on ESPN2 against Mississippi Valley State at 4 Eastern. Back to Division I, Arizona and California. Tell me, chilling on the sidelines? Well, not really, because this team did have a struggle for a while. Brady Batten, the backup quarterback, finds Richard Dykes, 40-yard score. Wildcats, despite having three extra points blocked and double digits and penalties, still win by five. Dan White out of this game with a possible concussion. Utah has a lead on UTEP, but the Miners have just scored. It's now a three-point game. Navy beats Duke at Wallace Wade Stadium. First time Navy has two road wins in a season since 1989. Mississippi State loses to Northeast Louisiana, which beat Kentucky last year, gets another SEC win on the road. Minnesota, no problem. They bounce back after the loss to Syracuse, their biggest win in 13 years. 
Speaking of the Orange Men, they rallied from down 17-3. For the last 24, they're 3-1. That's the best record in the Big East. Boston College has lost three games this year, all to Big Ten teams, including Michigan State today by four. Northwestern's biggest win since they beat Indiana in 1975, but Corso beat them every year after that. Northwestern wins by 24, and Iowa's 3-0. They've won seven in a row. Their quarterback, Matt Sherman, is putting up some good numbers this year. Jay Parker kicked a field goal for Army on the final play of the game. They honor Blanchard and Davis and the great teams of the 40s and get a tie. North Carolina's most points since 1928 as they shut out Ohio. And San Jose State kicked a 42-yard field goal with 18 seconds left to get their first win of the season for Hall of Famer John Ralston. It's been a great first half in Norman. Great catch to by Juwan Penny, stretching out to get the Eric Moore toss, helping the Sooners up three. You know, people may not know this, but football is really a people business. It's just like the car business. It's about taking care of people. The way to win is 100% commitment from everyone. 100% every day. Are we perfect? Far from it. But we're always working on it. We'll always be here for you. Experience the difference at Phil Long. Hey, Jay, have you ever played football? Yeah. That's why I'm selling cars. Get it in gear with the new GMC Sierra 5 speed with up to 175 horsepower to get the job done. So now you can move all kinds of stuff. Or just sit back and relax. But don't forget safety. In fact, Sierra delivers so much, let's see that again. The GMC Sierra 5 speed. The right truck, no matter what your speed. Get it in gear at your Colorado GMC truck dealer now. of Oklahoma is ready to become a model and a pace setter for higher education in our country. For example, did you know that OU has more National Merit Scholars per capita than any public university in the United States? And that we're building a truly outstanding honors program, the small classes taught by our very best faculty. Watch it. You'll be hearing a lot more about the University of Oklahoma. We're back on the GMAC Halftime Report and checking the baseball situation. Seattle, a chance to win the West tonight, but Texas has come out with the big bat. The Mickey Tettleton, first inning, three-run homer off of Andy Bennis has staked Texas to a big lead. They're now up 9-2. Seattle wins the West if California cannot rally to beat Oakland. The Yankees have clinched at least a wild-card tie with their win today. Now, in the National League, Colorado wins. They clinch a tie of at least the wild card. Chicago's eliminated. Houston's still alive. The Dodgers must win to maintain their lead over the Rockies. It all comes down to tomorrow, or maybe the day after. Well, tomorrow on ESPN2, we will definitely have Houston-Chicago. If the Angels win, you'll see coverage of New York and Toronto. We should show you both games at the same time. Go back and forth, and then... If there's a meaningful game for any of the eight remaining playoff spots, you'll see it live right here on ESPN following our NASCAR race, which is the Holly Farms 400, featuring the return of Ernie Irvin to Winston Cup action. Great day tomorrow. Tonight, in boxing, Roy Jones Jr. has successfully defended his IBF super middleweight title, landing 40-plus consecutive punches in getting his 30th win. Who's going to apply the knockout punch last in Norman? Hessler's looked pretty good. Touchdown pass to Phil Savoy, then touchdown to Ray Carruth in the final 17 seconds, getting the Bucks within three. Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Call 1-800-32-SMART about Smart Lease by GMAC. It's an affordable way to drive off with a new GM vehicle. And it might even give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. The road doesn't always rise to meet you. The wind isn't always at your back. 
so for energy. Always rely on a low-fat, highly nutritious power bar. on the GMAC Halftime Report. Tonight at the Rose Bowl, Fresno State and Sweeney's teams always play well against Pac-10 teams. Right now, UCLA has a 10-0 lead. The last time these teams met, Troy Aikman was the UCLA quarterback and was sacked 10 times. Hasn't been that bad yet for the UCLA quarterbacks. We'll keep you updated on this during our second half. Coming up, we'll go back to Norman for the second half as these two unbeatens battle as advertised. Sooners by three. About all the new truck choices there are. Now just think of extended cabs. Now just extended cabs available with V8 power, four-wheel drive, and standard anti-lock brakes. Now just extended cabs available with V8 power, four-wheel drive, anti-lock brakes, driver's side airbags, full instrumentation, aluminum wheels, high back bucket seats, two-wheel bed liner, power windows, AM FM CD player, leather wrapped steering wheel, and so much more. Now we'll make it easy on you. Just think of the GMC Sierra Club Coupe. See your Colorado GMC truck dealer today. Sunday night NFL on TNT looks at the linebacker, plays defense, roguishly independent, loves to hit people, feeds off intimidation, brute force, relentless pursuits. So what do you think happens when he has to wait till Sunday night to play? Yeah, there's something about Sunday night football. Sunday night NFL on TNT. Sponsored by Briggs Plus, grand opening at Kipling and Bulls. New set of academic freshmen would need a minimum grade point average in at least 13 core courses in high school and a corresponding minimum score on the ACT or SAT. Ask a coach or guidance counselor about these new requirements. Prepare yourself now. It's never too early to hit the book. This message provided by the NCAA. 17 to 14, Oklahoma leading over the Colorado Buffaloes as we're here at halftime. And Mike, off the top of the telecast, we talked about the two young quarterbacks. What kind of grades would you give them for the first half of play? I give them both an A because I think both of them made big plays in the first half. Eric Moore here with a pass to Juan Penny for the touchdown. Come right back with the other side, Don Hester with his touchdown pass to Ray Carruth. Both have had big halves. And they really, Oklahoma's had a better running game, so they benefited Eric Moore more than John Hessler's running game of Colorado. But Colorado started to get a little success in the running game there in the second quarter. You and I talked uh, during the halftime as you look at P.J. Mills, who's the deep man for the Sooners, and we felt as though that maybe Hessler was kind of getting into the rhythm of the game more than uh, in that first quarter. I see more things open for him than I really do for Eric Moore on the other side. Jason Leslie. Picks it off, and this is P.J. Mills from the six-yard line. And let's check in with Mike Adamley, uh, who's with a special guest. Mike? Troy, the numbers for John Hessler, 14 to 22 touchdown passes. It looks like he's finally settled down a little bit. Yeah, I think he is. You know, he's just got to get in his rhythm, and I think he did right there at the end of the second half, I mean, end of the first half. You know, he hit that touchdown pass, and, you know, he told me he felt real good about things. So I know you guys, one of the reasons why you made the 66-man travel roster is to room with him on the road and, and, and to be with him on the sidelines. What kind of things did you discuss last night and at halftime? Well, I just told him to settle down and take his time out there. And, you know, if, if he feels pressure, get out of there and make something big happen. Notice you had the shoulder pads on and the knee brace on before the game started. How do you feel? What's the prognosis? I feel great. Um, you know, I just got to wait to get cleared by the doctors and all that. Uh, you know, they want to take it slow and don't want to get any swelling in there. So uh, I just got to wait for them. Okay, Coy, thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Coy Detmer, as you look at the Hessler on the sideline, 140 yards and two touchdowns. Oklahoma keeping the ball on the ground as they open the second half of play. And it is going to be a second down and short. And an injured player is James Allen. The junior out of Winwood, Oklahoma. 
He was shaken up early on in the contest. And 19, Jeff Frazier has come in replacing him. So we'll try to get an update as soon as we can on James Allen and his status. Gerald Moore, and he'll have the first down as he bangs his way out to the 35-yard line, and middle linebacker Matt Russell and Ryan Olson combine in the stop. Except for the fumble that Eric Moore had, which Colorado turned into a touchdown, Oklahoma's really played very disciplined on offense tonight. Their, their offensive line, which I thought was a question mark coming into this game, really has played well against this front of Colorado, and they've been able to control the ball on the ground and control the clock. He looks up and sees Colorado showing blitz, and here they come, and they'll try to take it on the street. No place to go to the right. Frazier reverses it, and he's going to turn it into a profit. As Mike Phillips will make the stop, the ball has come loose, but they say it is dead at the 38-yard line. And Mike, let's take a look at the first half stats, and what kind of story do you see here? Well, again, I think the fact that Colorado, when you look at the rushing yards, only 32 rushing yards, this is a team that three times this year has had 200-plus rushing yards and 200-plus passing yards in the same game. So they've got to find an answer there to run the football. They've not been able to get the big play against this Oklahoma defense yet. Well, Frazier almost caught for a loss, and he winds up with a gain of four. Short drop this time, gets it out to Mills. Tried to break off the tackle, but he couldn't get away from Kenny Wilkins. That was a good tackle by Kenny Wilkins. Three-step drop by Eric Moore. You like to throw that quick passing game, especially when teams are blitzing on you because you know they can pick up the blitz and you're going to get the ball off before they get to the quarterback. Good call again by Gary Nord, who has 110 people here tonight from Kentucky. He had to spend $1,300 on tickets tonight. You'd, you'd figure that they'd find a way to... Yeah, not, not that many tickets. 110 tickets. Not so fast. Third down and short. The line to make is the 45. And they come back into the boundary with the pick. And with the hit, I don't think he got it. Russell is right there to make the hit on Gerald Moore. There you think the Sooners are looking at the fourth down. I, I think you're right. There's the emotional leader of that defense, Matt Russell. Where's number 16 as a middle linebacker? He's an in-between tackle, tackle guy. He's going to make a lot of plays. You see, he's faking the blitz. Now he steps into the block. Now he'll scrape off to the left side, unblocked, makes the tackle on Gerald Moore. Brian Lewis will stand back to kick, waiting for this one at the 28-yard line. And he has got that gusting win behind him as you look at Steve Roscoe, who is back in a single safety for CU. block Brandon Southward is the man who got the block number 46 so it is a 10 yard kick and Colorado will take it over at their own 44 yard line so let's take a timeout 11 21 left in this third quarter Sooners by three College sports on direct TV. Takes me back to my days at standing on the goal line, making my moves from the top of the key. Because I get hundreds of college football and basketball games I can't get on cable. Even my alma mater. Ah, the long hours of practice, the uniforms, the camaraderie. I was the best horn player in the band. Now for as low as $34.95 a month, you can own the 18-inch DSS dish of your choice with direct TV programming. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. Ah, the joys of a minivan. That big sliding door. The heavy, removable third seat. And those rear windows that don't roll down. Oh, what could be better? Introducing Odyssey. With four doors and an easy fold-away rear seat. It's not just a minivan. It's a Honda. Before introduction, a Moen faucet is tested at least a half million times against leaks and drips. So it's hard to find a more reliable faucet. No matter how you look at it. Moen. Buy it for looks. Buy it for life. 
Now at Pep Boys, get any four of our 35,000-mile all-season steel-belted tires at an incredible low $109. That's right, any 75 or 80 series, any four, just $109 at Pep Boys now. ESPN's presentation of CFA Primetime is brought to you by American Honda, celebrating their 25th anniversary of selling cars in America. And by Discus Athletic Activewear. Discus Athletic, the way America plays. Well, a lot of great ones here at OU. 97 All-Americans, but maybe none greater than these three Heisman Award winners, Billy Sims, Billy Vessels, and Steve Owens. just joined us the kick has been blocked and only 10 yards did it advance downfield to Colorado with great field position ball is fumbled on the ground and Hessler makes his own recovery following a collision here's the punt block the play before Brandon Southward is going to come through now here's the missed block it's by the person uh, by the up back it's Michael Rose number 20 just doesn't pick him up and there's the block kick. Both teams getting a kick block in this ball game. Marlon Barnes is coming to running back. Number nine, the sophomore out of Memphis. Pass this time to Anderson, though, and he'll take it to the 40-yard line. Wrapped up by Tyrell Peters and also Wendell Davis. on the sideline looks like he's having an equipment problem so uh, hustling to retie that shoe 17 14 oklahoma but colorado with a big opportunity here but they got to convert now on a third down play they got to take it all the way to the og 44. the ball but Martin Chase was all over quarterback John Hessler. John Hessler tried to slide to the left side and he slid right to Martin Chase number 93 and he just put that ball up for grabs. That was a hope and a prayer on that pass. Win, lose or draw in this football game. The Colorado coaching staff is going to say to their team on Monday, guys, we left so many opportunities on the field and did not take advantage of Saturday night. Mitchell back to punt. ESPN is your home for college football again next Saturday. At 11.30, it all starts with college game day. At 12.30, Michigan takes on Northwestern. At 3.30 and 7, catch up on all the scores and highlights. And at 7.30, see if Miami can slow down the Florida State Seminole. At 10.30, we put a period on the day. Eric Moore brings his club out. They have a first down at the 16-yard line. Frazier back in the lineup, replacing James Allen. He gets the fake, and Moore will take it all the way to the sideline and just throw it away. And let's go to Mike Tirico. Ron, another update on baseball. Roger McDowell, the Texas Rangers, gets Vince Coleman to uh, induce this fly ball to center field, ending the game. So that means if California loses, Seattle wins the West, they back in. And if California loses, the Yankees win the wild card. Seattle does not clinch the West on their own thus far tonight. Ron, one of these two teams is going to get a big play, and it's going to change the course of this football game. They've had some big play opportunities, just have not been able to take advantage. And the second down play, this is Gerald Moore, who will take it out to around the 20-yard line, and now they've got a third down and one. Gerald Moore, nicknamed Thunder. He looks like Thunder. 5'8", 226. He's going to be a good back for some team in the NFL someday as the one-back player back there because he's got great hands, built low to the ground, 
got accelerate. He's got it all. He really does have good acceleration, Mike, which gives him an added weapon with that body, that stocky body that a lot of backs don't have. You like to get the ball to him in the passing game because he has really got some great hands. Blitz coming right up the middle. Moore has time to get it away, but that's what the pressure forced him to do. Threw it too quickly, and it was Kerry Hicks who was all over him. Kerry Hicks, the player last week that blocked the AM field goal that kept the score at 21 to 20. The starter and defensive line for Bill McCartney for all those years and now Rick Neuheisen. You remember I said he always has a big play. He had to block that field goal last week against Texas AM, which was which was giant. Let's see if Brian Lewis can get this one away and everybody picks up their man. up the middle and I'll tell you what I'm not too sure that Southward didn't get a piece of this one but it takes an Oklahoma bounce and a huge cheer from the crowd as this one is going to go inside the 30 yard line so they wind up with a 51 yard boot tight out on the field let's take it with them we'll be right back Because we offer our business class passengers complimentary limousines, sleeper seats with up to 15 inches of extra legroom, and personal video screens at every seat. Or it may just be our refreshingly different British personality. Whatever the reason, it seems we put a few noses just a bit out of joint. Mm. Upper Class by Virgin Atlantic Airways. Get ready for an SEC West border war. Mississippi State versus Auburn. Thursday at 8, only on ESPN. Oklahoma 17 to 14. And Mike, what in the world is going on on special teams? Well, first of all, 10-man rush. Your center is not going to block anybody. Now, this is southward again. He's going to come through. We're going to watch him come through. And we'll stop it here in a second. I'll show you what the problem is. Stop it right here. That's the personal protector now, number 27, Colin Southward, right here. Colin Rosenberg, he just misses the block. And now you got another possibility of a, of a kick block. He didn't get to it he that time. He didn't get to it, but, but, he, close. but he forced him to, to get away a very high and short kick, but they got a good bounce. Barnes the step back, and he takes the deep handoff. Good job by that OU defense. Simpson, along with Martin Chase, combining to stop him. Slow development plays against this Oklahoma defense. You forget about it because they run too well. They recover. They get off block. All those three of those linebackers, we had that Bermuda triangle of linebackers at uh, Louisville the other night. were pretty good linebackers. I don't know what this triangle would be called, but these are three really solid backers that can run. They did lose a yard, so it's going to be second down. The line to make is out at the 40. Play action. Hester over the middle. Got a man wide open. They blew it coverage, and it's Caruth. And remember, he can fly. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Colorado. You remember I told you some people say he's under 4-2. You get him in the open field, forget it. Well, I said it earlier. Somebody's going to get a big play and going to take over this football game, and it's Colorado. 71 yards. The interesting about Ray Carruth who caught that touchdown pass. He's a running back in high school, and Colorado under Bill McCartney recruited a lot of running backs and then moved him to wide receiver. This is Ray Carruth. 
runs under a 4 3 40 and you like you said ron rod henderson you forget it strike up the band because you're not going to catch him 71 yards and just like that the buffaloes have gone on top boscarichian to attempt the extra point and he's got it so we'll take a break 754 left in the third quarter and all of a sudden the buffaloes are warming up They're a heaven. Definitely. The Last Chance Saloon. Open 1913. A hangout for locals. And tourists. Then there's the annual Wildlife Appreciation Day. Canada's number one beer, Labatt Blue, proudly served. Yeah, there's a heaven. You just gotta know where to look about all the new truck choices there are. Now just think of extended cabs. Now just extended cabs available with V8 power, four-wheel drive, and standard anti-lock brakes. Now just extended cabs available with V8 power, four-wheel drive, anti-lock brakes, driver's side airbag, full instrumentation, aluminum wheels, high back bucket seats, tilt wheel, bed liner, power windows, AM, FM, CD player, leather wrapped steering wheel, and so much more. Now we'll make it easy on you. Just think of the GMC Sierra Club Coupe. See your Colorado GMC truck dealer today. and Rod Manuel combined to make the stop on him. Well, what kind of balance have the Buffaloes had tonight? Well, this, is, this is what it looks like. Passing, 284, and rushing only 31 yards. And Oklahoma's only really given up an average of 50 in the first three games, but they've been the passing team. San Diego State, FMU, North Texas State. The boy makes the catch at the 30 and is being pushed back. That'll wind up being a gain of four. As Bush and Broderick Simpson combined to make the tackle. The other thing about the Colorado quarterbacks, they do not throw a lot of interceptions. They don't make a lot of mistakes. They know where they're going with the football, and that's attention to detail. As you see, Coy Detmer, who played down in Mission, Texas, for his father. They know where they're going with the football. It's not a guess for them. Clock going under 13 minutes left to play in this one. And the Buffaloes would love to have about a seven or eight minute drive right here. Didn't get the playoff though. This one's going to cost them five as the whistles are now being blown. And instead of a second down at about five, it's going to be second down and ten. Well, since his arrival in 94, they've thrown only five interceptions, Mike, to back up your point at 434 attempts. And you, you look at John Hester coming into this season, into the A&M game, he only threw 15 passes for Colorado. So all of a sudden, he takes over the A&M game, and here tonight, he's throwing for four touchdown passes. Again, attention to detail. So it looks like we're having trouble with the 25 second clock. It is showing zero. So John Laurie has to go over behind the bench. And so we're going to be held up here for just a second as they try to get that problem rectified. And let's check in with Mike Tirico again. Mike. Ron, in baseball, it's simple. If California loses, the Yankees in Seattle are in the playoffs. Down 3-1, Chili Davis. A three-run homer that puts California ahead. A lead that they've extended now up 5-3. The Angels need a win to stay alive in both the West race and the Wild Card race. We'll keep you updated. So will SportsCenter after this fourth quarter. Ron. All right, thanks, Michael. And, uh, the look on this young man's face. You'd think he was down in the ball game, but his club leads by 11. 
Mitchell in trouble. He's going to be sacked at the 25-yard line. Three times they've gotten to him. And Martin Chase, big number 93. He's only a sophomore out of Lawton, is the guy who got it. So now it's going to be third down and 10. That's the first sack that's been gotten by somebody other than Cedric Jones tonight. Quick success thrown to the back side of the backfield. They had the flare pass on last time. Threw a screen early in the ball game. Nice time for this, too. Right over the middle, it is dropped by Peru. Tyrell Peters, the linebacker, middle linebacker, was right in good position. Here comes the crowd now trying to get one last ditch effort for this ball club. Peters heading for the sideline, and we're going to have P.J. Mills back to receive this punt from Mitchell. Pressure is on. They didn't get to it, though. Very high. Good coverage kick. And Mills going to run away from it. And it will be touched dead at the 37-yard line. So it is a 37-yard punt, and we'll be right back. As soon as a State Farm customer calls with a claim, I'm right on the phone to our claim center. The work is partner. Nancy gives me the information, then I contact our customer. We've settled hundreds of claims together. John's attitude is... You've got to be quick, and you've got to be fair. Quick and fair. At State Farm, teamwork is what it's all about. We make a great team. And like a good neighbor, State Farm... Introducing the new Plymouth Grand Voyager. It's filled with clever ideas. Now there's a sliding door on this side and this side. 27% more room for you and all your stuff. And seats that roll out of the way. A gazillion cup holders that hold almost anything. Plus more safety and greater visibility. You can carry more and do more. The new Plymouth Grand Voyager. It simply slides, folds, protects, unfolds, rolls, and drives better. There's one way to win the Napa 500, and then there's another. At Napa's Pick the Winner Sale, where you can register for a chance to win the Napa 500 pace car. While you're here, pick up some great parts and accessories at low prices, like Autolite spark plugs, just 49 cents, and Napa halogen headlights as low as $4.99. The Pick the Winner Sale, going on now at Napa. We keep America running. We keep America running. presentation of CFA Primetime is brought to you by Beachwood Age Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. And by Chrysler Plymouth and your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Well, the Sooners still have time. We have 11.47 left in this fourth quarter, but Mike, you got to do better than they did in the third. They were held to only 29 yards in the third quarter play. And that's the reason Garrett McGee's now in the quarterback. They're looking for a spark. Howard Fellenberger trying to get the senior to give us, or the junior to give us a spark. Six screen Mills right over the middle. Looking for a block, and he gets it. Inside the 40 and down to the 36-yard line. When you throw the wide receiver screen, the other wide receiver to that side has to block. Jawan Penny, number 89, gets the first block and the big block for P.J. Mills. He comes back inside. Jawan Henry, you see, Jawan Penny makes the block. Now, P.J. Mills works up the football field and shows good speed also. He caught a touchdown pass in the first game he ever played here at Oklahoma. He had 26 yards on that play and was only one man away from taking it the distance. Well, Derek McGee gets back to the line of scrimmage, but that was a coverage sack right there. Well, Howard Snellberger's playing Sparky Anderson here. He, he's bringing in his reliever here, Derek McGee, who he, you see has been pretty productive. And Gary Nord told me the other day in the meeting, the quarterback coach and offensive coordinator, he says, Derek McGee is solid on this thing. He knows we're going with Eric Moore, and he wants this to be a part of this ball club. And as our picture showed earlier, he was rallying this team on the sideline. Drop and a quick pass, and Penny just dropped it. 
hit him in the hands, and he was trying to go ahead and make his turn before he secured it. That's a good throw by Garrett McGee. Difference in the two quarterbacks, of course. Garrett McGee's a senior. Sees the field maybe a little bit better than the younger Eric Moore. Transfer out of Arizona State, Jared McGee. 10 minutes, 41 seconds left to play in the ball game. And Oklahoma trying desperately to get something going. Screen to Gerald Moore, breaks it up the middle. Gets by one tackler and is going to be caught about two yards shy of the first down. And Colorado has an injured player at the 35. Ron, this play really didn't have much of a chance. What made it a play is Gerald Moore has some good ability. You see the, the nickname Thunder moving up that football field. Harry Stamp, 76. Good block. Steve Roscoe with the tackle. You got to be impressed with Gerald Moore. Looks like this is Daryl Price, number 95, a senior out of Beaumont, who was injured on the play. He has had some knee problems don't know if it is, uh, it is a knee or not and we're going to find out in just a moment we'll take a break 10 25 left in our ball game 11 point colorado lead just off the pacific coast highway there's a place where america ends and the pacific begins all right outside your window it's the seven gables inn overlooking monterey bay seven gables 14 rooms one spectacular view so if you go, bring your wide angle lens and your Vista card because the Seven Gables Inn will take your breath away. But they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Man has always been fascinated with speed. But winning is more than a flash of speed. It's a measure of skill. A test of guts. That's why the true spirit of NASCAR lies not in the machine, but in the man who drives it. We're proud to be part of this great sport. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. Here's another clever idea from Plymouth. To make the new Plymouth Grand Voyager even more versatile, they simply went back to the drawing board. And voila, a driver's side sliding door was born. Now it's twice as easy to get into. Twice as easy to get out of. Twice as easy to load. Twice as easy to unload. Grand Voyager. It simply slides, folds, protects, unfolds, rolls, and drives better. In a rivalry like this, rankings don't matter. Miami versus top-ranked Florida State. Next Saturday at 7.30, only on ESPN. Colorado 28 and Oklahoma 17. Tomorrow at 1, catch the return of Ernie Irvin to the racing scene. The 16-time NASCAR Winston Cup winner debuts in the Hobby Farms 400 tomorrow on ESPN. Well, we're happy to report that Daryl Price was able to uh, come off the field under his own steam, but I'm not sure if he knew if uh, he was in Shakota, Chickasha, or Parker City. Uh, he had been knocked a little silly. Lifts up the middle, ball is fumbled, it's still loose, and Colorado has picked it up. Jones will take it back to the 45-yard line. Frustration, you can't make again those mistakes. Looked like a low snap to Greg McGee that he never really had a chance to handle. Turnovers, you see Colorado with zero and Howard Snellenberger's ball club just coughing up a fourth and two situation check the snap out to Garrick McGee he said never got back Chuck Langston hit him in the foot sure did he hit him right in the big toe Greg Jones 59 picks it up he was an outside linebacker last year led Colorado in sacks last year as though he might have gotten that left arm in 
injured a little bit after he picked up the fumble. Running play to go with Troutman. Tyrell Peters, number 45, the junior out of Norman. Right there to make the stop. Talking to the coaches the other day, they said sometimes Tyrell Peters likes to run around blocks. And of course, you don't want people to run around blocks. And they were watching film one day, and they told him, he said, you can't run around blocks. You can't make the play. And then all of a sudden, he made the play. And they said, well, the next time, you won't be able to make the play. <laughs> he ran around that block and just made the play again. Some guys just have great ability to get to the football. Double pass to Troutman. And then he really gets waxed by Sterling Lucky. And a bunch of other Sooners came in to help out after that. Tonight, when Oklahoma comes back on offense, do you, do you come back with Derek McGee? Do you come back with Eric Moore, the, the, uh, the freshman? Or I think you go with Derek McGee again. He had him on a little bit of a run. Matt Lepsis now the tight end been quiet the last few plays for Colorado in the passing game. Third down and they need the 47 yard line and they get it complete to the near sideline to Ray Carruth and Carruth's going to have the first down plus eight. Again on the outside the big cushion by Oklahoma. Ray Carruth as you see him come off the ball 31 Larry Bush just gives him a lot of room and really turns and starts to run. And again, that's the threat of that speed. That's what speed will do to you on the outside, your corners. <laughs> 111 yards on five receptions. 16 on that last pass. That's a pretty good, pretty good ratio there as far as yardage, Mike. Troutman straight ahead. He'll have three. Peter stops him, and right now all Colorado's interested in is just running that clock on down. Mike Adamley, let's uh, check with you. Well, all three of us were down here at practice last night when Colorado was walking through, and I think teams in a lot of respects are reflecting in their coaches, and Rick Neuheisel made a point of saying that he believes that football should be fun, that there's a place for dis discipline. A couple of weeks ago, it was snowing in Boulder. A lot of freshmen on his team had never seen snow before, so he called a timeout in practice and said, guys, go for it. They had a big snowball fight. More in a moment. <laughs> on top. He's got Savoy in the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado. <laughs> yeah, that makes five, and that means he's the new record holder. And there's more touchdown passes than any quarterback has ever thrown in a game for Colorado. He kind of built this program. He really did. He took it uh, when they were really down, and people got on him a little bit early, and Bill Morote, the AD, stayed with him, and he built a program. And even though they lost all those players to the draft last year, this is still a solid program, and Rick Neuheisel is doing a great job with it. Well, they're trying to get one more blocking back on. This is Roska, who's coming on late. Voskovician gets it and let's take a break. 746 left in our ball game. It is the Buffaloes by 18. 1945. The first troops are just beginning to arrive back home from the war. There is the flush of victory. Welcome homes and family reunions. And then quietly America goes back to work. In Colorado, a small car dealership is born, begun by Phil Long himself, with a little help from his friends. Now, some 50 years later, we're still here, still offering the best values on America's favorite vehicles, and still thankful for all the help from you, our friends. Sunday night NFL on TNT looks at the linebacker, plays defense, roguishly independent, loves to hit people, feeds off intimidation, brute force, relentless pursuits. So what do you think happens when he has to wait till Sunday night to play? Yeah, there's something about Sunday night football. Sunday night NFL on TNT. Sponsored by Briggs Plus, grand opening at Kipling and Bulls. Coming up on...
sidelines, but the Buckeyes remain a pain in the neck. Plus, Ernie's amazing comeback. Truck on over to Sports Center following the game. And remember, tomorrow on ESPN2, the final day of the regular season, you will see one of those two games, maybe both, if they both mean something for the playoffs. And if any of the eight playoff spots are still up for grabs after the auto race, you will see all the meaningful action on ESPN. Back to Ron. Well, there you see our new score. Colorado 35 at Oklahoma 17. And you know, right at the beginning of the second half, Mike Adamley had the interview with uh, with Coy Detmer. We, we discussed here in the booth as well that we thought that Hessler had calmed down, that he was really into the game. I think he's calmed down all right. In the second half alone, he is 10 of 14 for 212 yards and three touchdowns. Looks pretty excited to me right now. Jason Leslie's kick two yards deep. And P.J. Mills to return it. Ron, here's what happens when you get outthrown on you all day. You try to take it away. Stop it right there. What happens is the corner rolls up, so he's in, an, he's in a position to take away the out. Now what happens is Phil Savoy sees the, uh, the coverage. Now he breaks down the field. Stop it right here. Number five has got to be over the top. That's Malin Wesley. He's not there. What do you have? You got a touchdown for Phil Savoy. Busting coverage. Well, the Sooners go from their own 13-yard line, and Oklahoma has not scored since we had 5.42 left in the first half. Jarrett McGee under pressure, and just throws it away. That was Craig Jones who was holding on to it. Oklahoma's second-half possessions not been pretty. A.J. Kristoff, defensive coordinator with some good halftime adjustments. Oklahoma missed some opportunities in the first half. We talked about that. But again, this is a team that's going to get back to the big games under Howard Schnellenberger. He's going to take his time. He's going to take a few lickings, not many, along the way. And he'll be back in these big games before long. McGee's going to run with it. And he'll get out of bounds. And again, it's Greg Jones who was out there to make the play, number 59. I'd say Barry uh, Switzer and uh, spoiled these the Sooner fans here for so many years. The great job he did here at Oklahoma. And of course, Bud had spoiled yeah. him pretty well before that. <laughs> I'd say. At that time, I think they called it what, the Oklahoma and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> but they got the right guy to rebuild it. P.J. Mills flipping from the right over to the left. Ball is fumbled. It's on the ground. And Colorado has recovered at the 12-yard line. And it's Clifton Peters who got that one. Looked like a bad snap again. And the only thing I could figure out is there's so much going on around Chuck Langston with the blitzing and the linebacker on his nose that he's just not concentrating on getting the football back. Clifton Peters, number 44, in the action talk. Again, I think what's happened is the blitzing has really taken its toll on the shotgun. Here's the exchange, and you see what he has to contend with, the linebackers and everything. The low blitz again, the low snap, rather, Clifton Peters with the recovery. So we're about to go under seven minutes left to play in this one in Colorado on the doorstep. Kessler with the give, and it's Marlon Barnes back in the ball game. And let's check in once again with Mike Tirico. Mike? Moments ago in San Diego at the Murph, Doug Bockler pitching to Raul Mondesi, who left with a knee injury last night. Dramatic two-run homer breaking a one-all side. Dodgers lead 3-1. If they win, they clinch at worst a tie in the West. So not great news for the Buck fans, who are also Rocky fans. Ron? Okay, thank you. Howard Schnellenberger, uh, probably thinking about conversations he's going to have after the ball game. He's thinking about tomorrow, too. He mm -hmm. wants to get right back to that tape, and he wants to get back on the practice field, correct these mistakes. 
and it's going to be a third down as Barnes takes it into the right side of the line. This is still a pretty talented football team. Oh, no question. Uh, and they, they you got, got a defense as good as this is. And you got marquee people, the linebackers, Cedric Jones. There's just a lot of mistakes tonight. Not getting the interception, uh, missed tackles, blocked kicks, uh, and just things that did, they unraveled a little bit. And that's what you expect in a big game sometimes when a team hasn't been in one. Now the way the 25-second clock is running down, I would assume Colorado is going to call a timeout. Either that or just go ahead. Yep, they're going to wait and call the timeout just before the clock went down, and they'll stop the game clock with five minutes and 51 seconds left to play. So we'll take a break. 35-17, Colorado. Here's another clever idea from Plymouth. In the new Plymouth Grand Voyager, a seat is not only a seat, it's a table and a cup holder. It can come with a drawer, and one seat can convert into two reclining child safety seats. Overall, the Plymouth Grand Voyager seats are the best minivan seats on wheels. In fact, they're the only minivan seats on wheels. Clever idea. Plymouth Grand Voyager. It simply slides, folds, protects, unfolds, rolls, and drives better. Todd and Celia Unger began their voyage together nearly 40 years ago. Today, they embark on retirement as carefree as when they first set out. That's because for the past 20-some years, they've worked with a broker from Dean Witter. Respect the power of a client's dream and help them achieve it. At Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Hi, may I help you? Yeah, I need some shorts to play basketball. Indoor or outdoor? Uh, outdoor. Uh, full court or half court? Half, I guess. Uh, pick up our player. Shirts or skin? Excuse me? Uh, day or night, home or away, team or one-on-one. -on -one. Is active wear becoming too specialized for you? Try Discus Athletic. Heavyweight sweats and tees. The active wear that's right for however you play. Discus Athletic. The way America plays. Floor store. Pick. 35 to 17, Colorado leading over Oklahoma. Don't forget Sports Center coming up. College football scores and highlights, the Major League Baseball pennant race, and the return of Ernie Irvin. That and more on Sports Center, which is cut up right after the ball game. So for Colorado tonight. They got a wake-up call in that first half as the Sooners jumped out 10 to nothing. Then 17 to 7. But here in the second half particularly, they have really come on. And as we mentioned, the passing game for uh, for Hessler and the Buffaloes has just been nothing shy of devastating. Ron, you know when you got an important game, you bring your band. That's right. And you designate a couple games a year where you want your band with you. And they wanted them here tonight in Oklahoma. No back behind the quarterback Hessler, and you hear the whistle before he got the playoff, and that's going to be another delay of game. And a real important game, you might bring Ralphie. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't, I don't think, think they think travel Ralphie. I don't think they travel Ralphie. That's the story of the game here, the big plays for Colorado. Such an explosive offense with all that speed outside. Academy, let's check in with you again. Well, in point of fact, they do travel, Ralphie, but the big if is if the other team will allow them in. Kansas doesn't, Oklahoma doesn't. That's why Ralphie doesn't go on the road. I wouldn't bring him in. I wouldn't let him come here. Barnes is going to take it down to the 10-yard line, and it's going to be fourth down. You really have to be a sportsman to let him come if you're on the up team, right? Yeah, I guess. Probably the thing they worry most about the liability. In a stadium like this where it's close and you don't have a track, there's not a large area to uh, to, uh, to house the, the Ralphie. Well, you'd have to take him around a couple of times and teach him his path. <laughs> Ralphie's path is wherever it wants it to be. Field ball to Ted Boscarici, and the ball will be placed down at the 18 to the 28 yard of Chim, and he's got the chip shot, knocks it home. 
And the Buffaloes now 38 to 17. Mike Adamley, let's check with you again. Well, Ron, for Colorado fans wondering if the Buffs can win a national championship without Coy Detmer, the Big 8 Conference has precedence on its side. Let's go to 1984. Remember Sooner starter Troy Aikman before he went to UCLA? He broke his leg. Jamel Holloway comes on and wins the next seven games, and the Sooners have a national title. In 1990, Bill McCartney lost the series with Darian Hagan. Charles Johnson comes on in relief. And, of course, everybody remembers last year Nebraska fans fretted when Tommy Frazier was sidelined by blood clots. Brooke Berenger saved the dream season and went 7-0. So there is a little history for Big 8 backup. The other thing about that, Mike, is Troy Detmer is probably going to return. 24 of 34 tonight, 348 yards and five touchdowns. But as we mentioned to you, probably the thing that's most impressive is what he has done in the second half. He's got three touchdown passes in the second half alone and over 200 yards. 10 of 14, in fact, in the second half. Jason Leslie kicks it off. P.J. Mills, six yards deep, he won't return this one. And let's check in once again with Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron, this McDonald's breakaway takes us to Lincoln, and those two Nebraska quarterbacks that Mike was just talking about still happen to hang around in Lincoln. Tommy Frazier today against Washington State had two rushing touchdowns, and Amon Green, the tailback, had a big day as well, over 150 yards. Nebraska wins 14-7. They play at Colorado four weeks from today. That is going to be a great football game because Colorado's got them at home. And barring any unforeseen upsets, and there's some pretty good teams in the Big 8, those two are set. Of course, Oklahoma visits Nebraska also. Pass thrown complete to Alexander. Well, they like Alexander a great deal. The quarterbacks do, and you can see why. Anything that's just in the zone, that but he reached up high, grabbed it in, and then took it out of bounds. This kid's only a sophomore. He's out of Chickasha, Oklahoma. Sports Center coming up next, and we're just under five minutes left to play in our game. open and Greg Jones is right there with him number 59 and that's twice that he's been set. Ron Murkison the linebacker was in coverage on Stephen Alexander and had him covered so well that's where Jarek McGee tried to go to football. You see Alexander try to go back inside. Murkison collisions him here. There's no place to go with the football. Then Greg Jones wraps up Jarek McGee. fingertips to Penny and then almost picked off. As intended for number 89, one penny and back at the six-yard line. Roska back in a single safety for the Buffaloes. He fumbled a snap they had to return on. Picked up the return, goes down the sideline, and he'll take it to the 40, and let's check in with Mike Tirico. Still keeping an eye on the baseball. California, Ron, they are in a very important must-win situation. J.T. Snow. Three run homer that extends California's lead. The Angels try to stay alive in the West race and the wild card race. I'm so confused. I'm just going to watch Sports Center and baseball tonight after us to get all straightened out. You're confused. How about us football people? Mike, you're going to have to explain that to us. You don't know what's going on, right, Ron? Baseball? So I better speak to myself. I know you probably haven't figured out. Oh, yeah. 
Ayub Abdul Rahman, the backup quarterback, number 12. He is a sophomore out of Oakland, California. Six feet, 205. And where you see the young streak, you think, well, I've seen number 12 on the floor. Ayub Abdul Rahman plays the up blocking back in punt formation. Lot, now, we saw it last week with Higgins, but most teams don't use a quarterback in that position. But what he can do, and he did it against Colorado State, is take that short snap on, on a, a punt formation and either throw or run with the ball. Well, the other thing is the reason you like a quarterback there, as some teams do, is because he makes the pound and he gives the blocking assignment. So it's a quarterback on the field making decisions. Marlon Barnes with the carry. Boy, Detmer calling to John Hessler for an autograph. <laughs> Woo! Woo Under three minutes left in this one. Sports Center coming up immediately following our ball game. Howard Stillenberger looking at his watch, and uh, Howard, you're right. This has been a long ball game. First half was really quick. Rahman will run with the ball. Spins off one tackler and not going to get away from Cedric Jones, though, as number 57 to put a forearm in his back. A lot of coaches probably tonight after a ball game go home, will go home, but I think Howard's going to stick around here. He's been known to pull some late nights after ball games and go in, get the tape right away, and go to work right away. Probably can't sleep anyway, stuck to his stomach right now, so. He wants to look at the tape and figure out what he do, what he has to do next, and that's what you, what coaching's all about, and teaching. This young man here has uh, got a plane ride back to Boulder, but uh, it's going to be a pleasant trip. They're going to stay undefeated. Running play, Barnes trying to go down before they get him out of bounds. And now tonight's piece of players of the game are for the University of Colorado, quarterback John Hessler. 24 of 34, five touchdowns, that's a school record. And from Oklahoma, defensive end Cedric Jones. Six tackles, seven hurries, two sacks. As part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. Ron, you almost figured he was going to be better tonight because he got all the practice this week. He didn't have it against Texas A&M. He had probably about 30% of the practice work in practice. This week, he got mostly all of it. So his concentration was excellent tonight, and he knew where he was going with football, and they did a nice job of preparing John Hester for this ballgame. They really did. And Mike, I think you've got a heck of a problem that Detmer tries to come back. Well, you know what? I'll tell you, really... I think they understand so well their, their situations. And Coy Detmer last year, same situation with Cord Cordell Stewart. He redshirted. Cordell Stewart took it. He knew he was going to be the quarterback. I think Coy Detmer's still the starting quarterback here. Now, I agree with you. They've got a little bit of a problem there. But I tell you, winning solves all that. Winning in that wide open offense solves it. There's Bill Moreau, the athletic director of uh, Colorado, down on the sidelines to shake hands with his new head coach. Now, that play right there is going to wind up out of bounds, and that's not what they wanted, because it'll stop the clock. Here's Bill standing next to Coach Neuheisel. Sports Center coming up next, immediately following our ball game. 38-17, to 17, the Buffaloes. And Oklahoma has not been able to score a point in the second half. In fact, the last time they scored was with just over five minutes to play in the first half. shovel pass and Barnes will be stopped just inside the 15 and with the fourth down play didn't pick it up and it goes over to Oklahoma so 31 seconds left in the ball game the other thing that, that Rick Neuheisel said last night as we visited with him I told you about 
His statement of no underestimating uh, having fun, that he does want the focus and discipline and everything, but that he also, he wants his club to have fun, but he also made a very good point of, he said, I'll come down on immaturity, and that means missing class, not getting homework done, not getting to weightlifting, whatever, and I'll come down hard on a player when he doesn't do that. That running play goes nowhere, and that should be the final play of this ball game. Some of the players having to be separated as the clock is down to nine and down to eight. And this one is history. That's the end of our ball game with the final score, Colorado 38, Oklahoma 17. For Mike Godfrey, Mike Adam Lee, and our entire ESPN crew, Ron Franklin saying so long from Norman, Oklahoma. Sports Center is next.